Hello everybody, welcome to this BTN game between Michigan and Penn State. It's going to be a great one. This is actually going to be a VOD review, hence why we're already in the game. No uh, picks and bans. We won't be able to see that. But anyway, my name is Rudy. I'm joined here by my partner in crime, my faithful companion, my Canadian soulmate, Doug. How's it going, my man? That's a lot of titles. Yeah, I like it. It keeps going every week. I got every, nothing every for week. you, though. <laughs> is that okay? That's you fine. You the title guy and I just sit here and... Yeah. and pretend I'm paying attention. That's fine with me. Yes. Okay. That works for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, when you mm -hmm. are, are you at zero seconds? Looks yep, I'm exactly like at it. zero seconds. So what we're going to do, just let's go over the team comps a little bit. Sure. Just because yeah, yeah, yeah. we, we don't have a pick and bands to kind of go through it. But uh, kind of surprised that we saw see a Kogma, an Azir, and a Varus get through. They're all pretty <laughs> high tier picks. It makes you wonder a bit what got banned, uh, but Azir has fallen down a little bit in priority recently with some slight nerfs in uh, 8.2, uh, I believe it was. Actually, no, he was on... T I can't remember. He has dropped. Like, people stopped playing him mm -hmm. to the same degree that they were playing him in 8.1, but it may be uh, unrelated. Oh, man, sorry. I forgot Azir did not get nerfed in 8.2. That might be upcoming, but... Yeah, no, it makes you wonder a little bit, but we got Kogma. We did see uh, Nunu not make it through, and with Azir and Kogma here, you <laughs> know that that means it got banned. Cause yeah, These definitely. guys would really have wanted it, but still, two power junglers in Sezwani and Zac, uh, pretty much the two preeminent tank junglers right now. Uh, Vladimir up top. Nothing too surprising. Nar. I, these are pretty classic teams, honestly. Yeah, there is a little bit of like what got banned beyond Nunu, but... You know, you're missing Zoe, you're missing Malzahar, you're missing Rise from the mid lane. It's Julius on Talia, uh, who is still an effective mid laner, but definitely a second tier at this point. I believe so. Uh, well, but yeah, classic Braum Tom matchup in the support role. So exciting. So no kills bot lane is what I'm hearing. It's, it's <laughs> Never. just going to be a farm lane no. down there. But uh, I guess with that, let's uh. Let's go uh, without further ado. Let's jump into it. So, Doug, if you are ready on three, two, one, play. All right. And let's go ahead and do it. Hopefully, there was a lot of spoilers in the timeline. I should just hit P. I can always forget that that's an option. Remember that for game twos and three? Well, if there's a game three going on. But well, that's um, a spoiler. Is there a game three? I don't know. We'll have to find out. But as we go forward. We're going to have probably just normal starts. We do see pings coming out from Penn State, though, as it looks like they're trying to do a little bit of a stack down here in the bot side jungle. Yeah, it looks like it'll be a four-man stack. Dogbrain will be headed up top, and they're going to immediately catch each other out a little bit. Uh, I don't know if Essence saw anyone from now PSU, but now now they will. <laughs> Cyanar will just walk on top, place a ward on him, and both teams will understand they have been spotted. Uh we're gonna do, we're gonna do the little counter seven stopwatches. Oh I think the God. last time we cast PSU, it was more like four. Yeah, uh, college was a little right. bit behind the meta. <laughs> They're catching up now, guys. We're 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 getting back to seven stopwatches. That is that is pro League of Legends. Uh, we do see minion dematerializer for Julius on Talia, giving that a little extra shove power. I'm curious to see exactly how he uses it with Talia, where where those breakpoints kind of sort out for himself. So like what minions he wants to kill more frequently. Um, I'm not too familiar with the specifics of Talia's wave shoving. But yeah. But that's the... I'm assuming... Oh, we, we did get the, we did miss the keystones, but... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming, assuming God Rain, at the very the least, thing, has yeah. uh, unsealed spellbook. Yeah, I'd be extremely shocked if he doesn't, just because going Ignite in the top lane is usually... Yeah. It's usually good in the early game, but falls off as you get to the mid and late when you want to make those teleport plays. So, yeah, I'd be very shocked if he doesn't have uh, unsealed spellbook with. And that usually, yeah, go, you know, you, you switch to teleport after the early uh, to be a top laner who likes teleport. But then even after that, you usually go to ghost, which is uh, Vladimir's best team fighting mm -hmm. uh, summoner spell. I did quickly check Silver's might, and that was one personal curiosity. It's going to be fleet footwork, says Wani. Uh, it's been a popular thing. Pretty recently getting that extra little bit of sustain in the jungle. I would actually surprise me. I didn't realize it was fleeting footwork. Yeah, that's just what Sejuani players take now. I, <laughs> I don't know what that says about tank runes 
in the jungle, or yeah, resolve there... tree in general, but fleet footwork is what Sejuani's do right now. But uh, we did say this bot lane was going to be a lot of a farm lane, but surprisingly enough, this uh, Tom catching Kogma forcing back Gated and Junrai there uh, with a lot of pressure. Gated already way below half health, popping his potion, but we see in the mid lane, Silver Might's going to show up on a tempo. The flash mm. already been used, and with that knockback, that's easily going to be a first blood going over to Silver Might. Michigan strikes first and strikes early. Yeah, I don't know if his... Oh, he hadn't even leveled E. That is super risky there uh, to not have that spell at all. And it means, like, as soon as Sejuani jumps on you and, and applies that slow and starts stacking that passive, I don't really think there's any point in even flashing. You need to accept your fate if you haven't leveled uh, your escape spell like that. He wasted both summoners, still died. Uh, and didn't even get any of the summoners out of Silver's Might or Julius. So that is massive uh, for Michigan right now. Yeah, that's going to be really tough for Penn State to come back from, especially when you're mid laner, where Tempo is usually the star of the show. When he goes off, it's yeah. almost impossible for any team to come back from that. So with their mid laner missing both their summoners for nothing, it's going to be tough to come back. As Sayonara is going to jump in, he does find the Kogma, but that's what the Tom <laughs> Kench does best. As long as you don't catch him as well, they yeah. easily get out of that. This is why bot lane is so fun right now. Braum blocks half of what you do. Tom um, Kench stops any aggression whatsoever. So you go back to farming. But yeah, gated and generally a little bit behind. 60 S down after really the early level one power of Kogma is still pretty good. He, le he levels W first, which is his power spell. Uh, Vars doesn't have a lot to match that with nowadays. I think, you know, with Arcane Comet out of it, so you can't just E, get that Arcane Comet proc and get a fair bit of damage right away. Uh, he takes a little bit to get going in lane. But they're catching up now and putting down some pressure right here. And then all that pressure is gone as Tom Kench <laughs> yeah. has one ability, boom, and everything's done. But um... He's running out of mana, though. Yeah, so that's pretty big. And Jenner actually sees this, goes to jump in. Devourer is down, so they might be able to find one more auto to get that last stack of concussive blows, but it's not going to happen as uh, Acquired Taste is going to go on to Jenner. So they're just going to go ahead and uh, kite back here. But um, the one that's going to be pretty interesting about these bot lanes is that they both love getting Rage Blade. So it's going to be a race to see who yeah. gets that item first, because that's going to be a huge power spike to whoever get gets it. Yeah, absolutely. These are both champions that spike pretty early. A lot of people put Kogma in kind of that late game carry realm, which is somewhat true. But he also spikes really darn early himself, getting that Rage Blade. Now we're going to get a jungle duel with Dog Brain collapsing. Yeah, Silver Might, though, just able to jump over that wall, is going to be able to uh, get out of that one. As the fight in the bottom is going to continue, as Talia with the roam down here. This is going to be a 3v2 heavily in favor for Michigan. Can they try to get the trade kill? No, Tippy is going to be able to get the kill there. And Junrai is going to be forced to run away there. Nice stand behind me to a minion, but is it going to be enough? Just the flash going to be used as well. So that is a great roam by Julius there as he's able to pick up a kill. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's going to be, what is it, Type T picking up the kill there, but Julius absolutely going in there, roaming, recognizing Tempo was looking to collapse on Silver's Might, which gave Julius a moment uh, to sneak out of lane and head straight. Ball. Didn't even use his ultimate. I don't know if he was level 6 at the time. As Gen Gen flashes for that surprise ult, but Dog Brain has the reflexes to pool. Uh, so that will just be a burned summoner and alt for Gen Gen. Yeah, I like the idea that if he would have caught uh, Dog Brain off guard, that was easily a kill. Uh, the only problem was you have to kind of, at this level, respect your opponents being able to uh, predict and uh, react in time. So uh, I think Gen Gen, that's just a little bit of a sizing up the competition. Now you realize, okay, that's something that Dog Brain's going to be able to react to. I won't try it in the future, or maybe it's another surprise <laughs> attack. We'll have to see what happens. But, um, I like the idea there. No, yeah, you, I mean, sometimes you, you can catch Vlad's off guard like that. You know, it, there's some preparation involved in casting that W. You gotta see it coming. You, you, there's predictable patterns with Nars often. If you're just out of the blue, flash on them, you're, you're sometimes able to catch them off guard. But ultimately, not in this case. Loses that summoner spell. A little bit of pressure in lane loss now, too, and Dog Brain. I will TP back to lane. As he switches off his Ignite. Uh, and now even CS here in that lane. Yeah, but bot lane, it is heavily in the side of uh, Tipti yeah. here. As he is uh, 
Rushing towards that Rage Blade is actually going to go for the AD, while Gated went towards uh, getting the attack speed instead. Um, we'll have to see who that favors more. I think since Kogma has his own little buff of attack speed built into his W, yeah. I think it's perfectly fine going with that pickaxe first. It does feel a little bit backwards just because Kogma has way more uh, on his e individual auto attacks when Varus does have those AD ratios on his Q and E. Uh, I think ultimately it just comes down to how much gold you have when you get there. Yeah. And if you have exactly the, whatever, 1100, I think, for a recurve bow, mm -hmm. then you get that. And then if you have, you know, pickaxe money plus two daggers, that's pretty good too. So, y you get what you can and whatever makes sense at the time. And the ultimate this time is going to land on a dog brain as Gen Gen's just going to try to rush him down. But here comes the turnaround from dog brain. He places the ultimate on him. The healing's going to come in. Not quite a lot, but a nice Q coming in. But here comes Julius again on Atelier. He is everywhere at this point. He does get thrown back by the let's bounce. Here comes a stopwatch games. Is Cyanar going to have one as well? I don't think he'll actually need to pop it. But uh, two stopwatches burn during that fight. Yeah, absolutely. The stopwatches start to be removed. Was it two? Yeah, uh, Talia oh, and yeah, sorry, Vlad. it's Talia. I was looking at the both the junglers, but you're right, Silver's Might was not there. It was Julius. Um, yeah, so that's off the map, though. You know, now you can you know note that in your in your book. No stopwatch. Of course, Julius and Dograin will probably both upgrade Zanyas at some point, though not anytime in the near future. But again, a good run by Julius this time, not picking up a kill, but you know certainly saving Gen Gen's life potentially. Uh, we'll have to use the ultimate this time, which does free up some map pressure for the rest of the team. Mostly bot lane, who uh, was the victim of the first Julius roam. And now Tempo is starting to get a bit of a CS lead with these roams from Julius too. So, room for PSU to come back here. Uh, but yeah, this bot lane needs to start improving. That's 20 CS down in what should be the winning matchup. Varus versus Kog'Maw. Uh, they're going to need some help there or just, you know, you know, pick it up a little. That's all. Yeah, that that uh, one kill and a 25 CS at this point is going to get that Rage played so much faster for Tipti. So I feel like if Michigan plays this well, they're going to be able to back with perfect power spikes. And after a Kogma gets a Rage Blade and you're not able to match that, I don't know what else you can do in lane except just stay back and farm with Q. Because any aggression onto you, you're going to lose the trade 100% of the time. Well, I mean, yeah, you are saved a little bit by the fact that you can pretty much just back off since they don't have an aggressive. Uh, Gen Gen's going back in, but Julius is on the way. No ultimate, but it looks like, yeah, nothing will come of that in the end. Julius will find the pink ward. Yeah, Gen Gen's just using that all on cooldown. <laughs> I think that's yeah. what's being the surprise about. It feels like if he is in Nara form and has that Nara ultimate available, he's been using it every time, which, hey, it's a good amount of damage, a good amount of pressure going down there. And I think he realizes that he's never going to really have that all-in potential on a Vlad. So he's just get, trying to get the damage in where he can. So liking the idea from Gen Gen there. And I feel like with his CS lead and with that hex trigger, he's going to be perfectly fine in the top side. As you actually see him... Actually trying to find vision and invading on the red side jungle here. Yeah, there's a potential collapse here on Sinara, or maybe just spawning him out as he goes into the mid lane. Uh, looks like that was actually a gank by Silver's Might that Sayonara was pushing back. Dogbrain finds Gen Gen. Takes a bit of damage as Gen Gen goes over the wall. But anyways, I was always saying, you know, the CS difference in this bot lane is tough, and as we can see, it's not looking great. But the kill pressure in this lane is very limited. Mm -hmm. Until you send everyone down bots, then things change. Uh, okay. Yeah, not Nothing gonna happen. They saw each other, they walked away again. Yeah. All eight members, oh, yeah. or not all, but eight uh, players were down here in the bot side. I highly expected some sort of aggression there, but now they just kite up backwards and left. So nothing too special going on the top side. Um, as man, Nar with summon area is just yeah, it's annoying. pretty brutal. And he's got the hex drinker too, which means Dog Brain really has no chance to all in him. And uh, now there's a potential dive. And we're going to see the Miasma pool being used already. Dog Brain forced to flash away. The heal's not quite enough to keep him alive there. He only used his ultimate on one person, so I don't even think he hit anyone. I think he missed. He? I think Ooh. he missed both of them. So I guess maybe that was just the healing he got from his Q then, because I did see a little bit of healing yeah. there, but uh. That would have been that would have been his uh, his Q as he did just whiff the hemoplague altogether. 
I had to burn the flash. We'll survive still. Uh, and head back to base. Likely actually be able to save teleport in this lane. So not a lot lost for him other than that burn summoner. As they weren't really able to capitalize on that. Now I am looking for when the first objectives will start to be taken. These aren't like the strongest objective control junglers. We don't, again, have a new new. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no there's no Callista. But an Ocean Drake is pretty nice. Uh, and I would wonder if they would start looking towards that. Particularly uh, Michigan here with how strong Type T and Essence are looking. As I yeah. say that, of course, Essence has now switched to the teleport on the Tom Kench. <laughs> so less combat power here, but... He can come out of nowhere uh, looking for a save or try to create an outnumber scenario. Uh, John is actually looking to go aggressive, but that's a yeah, Tom we... Kent still. They're going to do it. But they're locked down by that Varus ultimate. Here comes Dogbrain as well, trying to jump on the backside of Tifty, but here comes Genji with a triple Gnar ultimate there, and that's going to easily put it in the side of Michigan as Sinar tries to use his less balance defensively, but it's not going to be enough. The stopwatch just going to be used to buy the time for his teammates. So a great reaction there by Michigan as everybody from their side came down except for uh, Sejuani, but she wasn't needed as they get two kills there. Yeah, I think this is PSU just not respecting the map right now. Actually, they're going to keep going. Yeah, the stopwatch is going to help with that turret dive as Junray is going to go down. Julius picks himself another kill there and Gate it, forced to use the stopwatch to get away. And we see the mid laner actually taking the turret tries as Tipti way in the side of uh, Penn State's, uh, or I guess, side of the map, able to pick up that kill. So that's another two kills and an easy tower for them. Michigan is playing this perfectly. Yeah, I mean, we talked about, you know, Varus and Kog'Maw are two very comparable champions that they both go Rage Blade first. So you can really just look at those two and clear as day tell which one is stronger. And right after Type-T finishes his Rage Blade, PSU tries to throw everyone at him when he has a Tom Kench in his pocket, when he has a top laner with teleport, when he has a Talia mid, and everyone from Michigan showed up there so quickly. They were on the ball, and it was just, it was a bit confusing for me, because I don't know why PSU thought they could create an outnumber scenario. Tempo, I don't even think, moved during that whole thing. Uh, obviously, Sayonara was there, and Dogbrain TP'd, but everyone from U, uh, U Michigan could have been there so quickly as they were. Now they're gonna try again on top. Yeah, they're gonna try again this time. Are they gonna be able to lock down the Tom Kench? He's the main focus at this point, but Sayonara's taking so much damage from this Kog'Ma. And yeah, this is a little confusing. Like, why start now they keep doing all this? without the Rage Blade. Yeah. Exactly, Varus Gated is not there yet. He doesn't have the damage to burst through a Tom Kench. You know, they're not gonna be able to get Kog'Ma. Another good pull by Dogbrain, dodging out that ultimate. Oh, but man. they are in dire straits right now. 5k down. No objectives have really been taken. I guess uh, the bottom lane turret, of course, fell after that dive situation. Uh, but you, you Michigan are just looking really good right now. And it's not like they're outscaled either. You Michigan don't have to push the pace. They have the Kog'Ma. You know, they have a Sejuani jungle. Their scaling is just fine. So they can honestly afford to take their time a bit. And do the controlled burn of this map. Yeah, I, I keep saying that this has just been mistimed by Penn State. They waited, it seemed that they waited until the Kog'Maw had the Rage Blade and then they went on him. It's like, you either have to go before he has the Rage Blade or when you have equal. But as we say that Dog Brain is gonna get jumped on by Julius with a nice roam again. Nice flash over the wall, but is it gonna be enough to get away? Ignite's taking the flash for that W is going to keep him in place as Gen Gen picks up his first kill of the game. And now Penn State sees that they have a an item or a, an opportunity here to go on them. And Essence is gonna be the first one, but a nice ultimate from Tempo as they're able to get two kills there. And that is exactly what they needed. Tipti on a shutdown. He does get the kill on a tempo in the long run, but that is gold that Penn State desperately needed. Yeah, that's a much better fight for PSU because A, they were out, they outnumbered Michigan, and B, they brought tempo. You know, Julius has been roaming all over the map. Tempo's just been farming. He has the most CS in the game right now. He had the Nashers tooth completed. He was at his own little decent power spike. Showed up to that fight. They get two kills, wipe out that bot lane, grab themselves a Rift Herald. They do lose a second tier tower in that bot lane uh, and they already lost that top turret so three turrets down 
And they're gonna lose Ocean Drake, but they get something, and that's the start. So an Ocean Drake gonna go in favor of Michigan. That's gonna be a good amount of sustain that they're gonna get. Not really if they do need it at this point, now that we're in the mid game. Uh, in my opinion, Ocean Drake does kind of fall off as once you get yeah, outside of laning phase. Really. It's these really good. These aren't exactly strong poke comps either way either. So the the siege game is not going to be a major part. As <laughs> Sayonara jumps right back in. Yeah, Penn State though backing off. I thought that was going to be a very forced uh, fight again, but they do back off this time. Uh, that's what you want to do with the Zach. If you do miss an engage, just back off. You're able to do it again. Like you, there we go. He goes back in. He's going to find. Both of, both of nice. them. Oh, Titi is actually going to get out in time, though. So Titi does not get picked in that. As we're going to see kills going in the favor of Michigan at this point. But Silver might might drop as well. The heal's going to come through. Titi, though, is going to drop. So this actually might be a fight in Penn State's favor. But Jen Jen is going off on this NAR. But he's going to drop. Can Natalia find some kills? I don't see it. It's actually going to be a 3 for 2 in favor of Penn State. Yeah, that was what you talked about. If you're gonna go for Tom Kent, you've got to get both, or if you're gonna go for Kogma, sorry, you gotta get both Kogma and Tom Kent. I actually, I really feel like sometimes if Tom Kent is CC'd, he shouldn't be able to spit out the guy in his mouth, but uh, it kind of felt unfair that they perfectly brought Essence back into the team fight, and Tip T was just like, alright, I'll just wait right here, guys. Uh, but they do ultimately get both of them, uh, get Essence out of the fight, uh, and, and actually. Take out Tipti, I believe, Tempo getting in there to do the work there. So a good engage, and that's the type of stuff they need to really get back in here because they're not, you know, at a strong point right now. They are still, after that fight, 5,000 gold down. They weren't exactly hitting major power points when they went for it. They just caught U uh, University of Michigan off guard, and they're going to have to keep doing that. And Zach is pretty much the best jungler in the game for catching people off guard, so... They're going to have to rinse and repeat here and They're use that Varus power. They are going to be able to lock down, but Tipti doing so much damage at this point. Junrai is just going to get deleted here as that engage was a little too far forward from their carry, so they didn't have the yeah. damage to back it up. And this is going to mean an easy kill and it uh, looks like a tower now on the side of Michigan. I mean, I guess you can catch them off guard when you initiate 3v5. Michigan's not <laughs> expecting you to do that because you don't have your carries. Uh, yeah, it, it was Varus, uh, it was Gated and Dogbrain, they weren't in the area, they weren't there yet. Sayonara just went way too ham. Ultimately, he lives, Junray does not, and that mid-tower will fall. And now, 20 minutes into the game, Baron is on the table. I'm not expecting a super early Baron here, but it's always something you have to keep in mind, especially when you're 7,000 gold down. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly, I would just keep applying the pressure to the lanes here. For Michigan. Uh, type is going to catch that bot wave. Good time to Rift Herald here for PSU. They are going to try to get their first tower of the game. Yeah, this is going to be definitely going down as Shelly is going to headbutt the tower. So, I don't know what that was at the end of their usage, but here actually comes the engage. They're going to find both the tanks and they're going to be separated from the team. Can they defeat these guys fast enough? It looks like they're going to be able to as Tempo is going on a killing spree. We talked about earlier how like, when he goes off, He's able to get Penn State wins, and we'll have to see if he's able to carry the game. Sayonara guesses wrong as Silvermite is going to be able to get out of here, but uh, they might be able to comply with more pressure in the mid lane. They do have the Sun Disc to back them up, but are they? No, I would say I, they're not picking no. for Baron. <laughs> I really hope not. That would be this massive overextension just taking out Essence, who even has teleport, so once he spawns, he could get there really quickly. Sayonara, I don't know if he has passive up. He oh, he's being taken does. low. He does a passive up, but now he wastes it because he walks back into the middle of everyone, and he's not going to be saved. Uh, he'll go down there as they are going to have to retreat off to the side here as they are escorted out by the Talia wall. <laughs> but uh, now is that gold lead is staying roughly the same as that 6,000 for the side of Michigan. Well, it's a little bit picking up that turret. So. It did help a little bit, but we see here they're starting out the Baron. They have all five members available while Penn State's missing Sayonara. This is a perfect opportunity for them. We see Penn State coming in, but Tempo has no mana for this fight. And that's going to be huge if he's going to want to try to come in. Dogbrain's going to come in. He only lands his Miasma on one person, though. Is it going to be enough healing? He's actually just going to drop right away. Penn State just trying to push them off, but they finished the Baron, and now they're going for the fight. Nice ultimate from Junray to get two there. And that's going to be an easy cleanup on the side of Michigan. Yeah, we did talk about it. It was pretty early in the game for the Baron, but of course, Kog'Maw has that percentage health damage. He can take down Baron really quickly, especially with 
the Jinsu's Rage Blade, and it really was the perfect opportunity. Sayonara was off the board, so there was no threat of a steal. Tempo has low mana. Gated wasn't super mana heavy either, and they just went for it. Great choice there. Ultimately, a probably not even a really good opportunity to contest there from PSU, as they end up just giving three more kills. You're right, Dog Brain hit one person with his Hemo Plague and died before it even went off. He's just not at that point yet where he can really go in there. I think the Zanyas before the Leandries would be important here, just with how far behind he is. He needs that Hemo Plague to proc and to at least tank more damage for his team to really be impactful at all. As Sanyas is trying to go in again, He's the ultimate to go for, but they might actually be able to catch out Silvermite, who's going to be locked down by the Concussive Glows, but here comes Essence. That's all you need to do as a Tom Kench, and with that uh, Stone Pillar, Julius is now going to be in here. They're going to go in on this, as we're going to see Silvermite does drop, but do they have the damage to fall back? as Jun, or Jen Jen in the backside while allowing Tifty to do so much damage here. Tempo is going to drop as well, as that is a triple kill going over to the Kogma. And this might just be it as they're going to push down and get an inhibitor easily here in the bot side. And being 13k behind, I don't know if Penn State can come back from this. Yeah, once again, they just try so hard to force a fight when they're down. It really it doesn't seem like they have any other idea in mind, but fight, fight, fight. And hopefully, you'll finally get someone taken out. It doesn't look like this will be the end of the game just yet. As University of Michigan are going to give some respect over... Uh, two PSU with the respawns coming out here. Tempo will be up in seven seconds. So, you know, they maybe could have pushed for at least one Nexus turret, but they're playing it super safe. They don't need to rush it here. Again, they are just so far ahead. They have plenty of scaling in their team. They don't need to worry about being outscaled. Uh, they are in control, and they know it. Yeah, like, all they really have to do now is go top, get that easy tower, and just push down and threaten the inhibitor up there. They really have all the time in the world at this point. 14k ahead, only 24 minutes in. This is almost something that even a 5v4 fight would still probably go in Michigan's favor. Yeah. I just want to talk about... We see uh, Type T, he went wits end second after the Jinsu's, you know, and you got Tempo, you got Dog Brain, you got Sayonara, even Gated to a degree. There's lots of magic damage on the other team, and there's no one other than Sayonara who's super tanky, and again, with Type T being so far ahead... Mm -hmm. He doesn't maybe need that Blade of the Rune King, but Gated is also going with Scent. He just picked it up now. You know, I'm looking at, you know, Essence, Silver's Might, Gen Gen. These are super health-heavy targets. You know, you get that Blade of the Rune King. You don't need more magic damage for your team. You already got Tempo. You got Dog Brain. You know, push Varus a little bit more to the physical damage side to force him to maybe get some armor against you and get that percentage health to deal with Silver's Might, to deal with Gen Gen, to deal with Essence and just give you a little bit more survivability in the fight too, because there's not even giant magic damage threats either. You know, Sejuani mm -hmm. these days is mostly physical. Obviously, Julius is scary, uh, but Gen Gen's heavy physical too, so just getting, you know, the life seal in the fight and that active for, you know, that clutch moment of, of move speed and just help you better kill the targets in front of you, I think it would have been a way better purchase than the Switz End. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Like, just be... The fact of the life steal and how tanky this side of Michigan is, I really would have liked to see the Blade of the Rune King come out from there. And it's going to be tough to come back because now he's a full, I oh, almost a full two items behind this Kogma at this point. Yeah. As it's just massive. As they're just going to push down this mid lane. The ultimate is going to whip from Silvermite, but it doesn't wasn't even needed. And the ultimate coming in from the Let's Bounce, but again, Essence is going to be able to save his jungler. I... As that Emperor's Defy does find Tipti, but June June in the backside doing so much damage on this Nar. But Penn State looking like they might be able to turn this around, but they don't have the health bars to do it. As that's actually going to be three kills going in favor of Michigan. As Dog Brain now is forced to run out, not able to try to go for these kills, even though he was full health, he's now half health, and just being chunked down by Julius. This is yeah, looking very good for Michigan. It's like, look at Genjin, you know, the, the Maw of Malmordius, uh, the Spectre's Cowl. You know, he's got so much MR, and you go the wit's end. They couldn't kill him in that fight. They get Type D out of the fight right away. But then when it came time for Gade to turn around and hit the Gnar, killing everyone, he couldn't do it. You know, it just... I feel like the Blade of the Rune King in that situation would help so much more. Could have made that fight right there, honestly, different. And 
yeah, again, they just lose another inhibitor. They lose everyone. I think it was Dog Brain was the only one left alive. And now 15,000 gold down. And, you know, itemization stops mattering pretty soon because you're just so far behind. And you can only, you know, keep, the, you know, keep these surprise catches on Type D coming for so long. For you, Michigan, you know, catches on to what you're doing and maybe just ends the game with a clean push. Yeah, I'm looking at the gold leads right now, and you see fairly standard set that you'd see in this point. 3,000 for the top lane, 2,000 for the mid lane. But the story of the game at this point is the 6,000 gold lead in this bot side. Kogma is just massively ahead, and whenever you say those words, it's never a good sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, sometimes it's okay. Like, a Kogma is massively ahead of the Vayne or the Tristana. Mm -hmm. That's usually okay, but the Varus... Varus is not a late game carry. He's a little bit more late game focused now, since the you know the Lethali build went away. But yeah, I mean ultimately he's he's really he's supposed to spike at you know one to two items. But the problem is Hypedy hit those one to two items so much sooner. He's now at four items. Gate is still on two. You know there's no recovering this situation from the bot side at least. You know you gotta look at tempo at this point. He was the one who found Hypedy in that last fight. The good Shurima shuffle in, throwing him into the middle of the fight with the wall. And, you know, we, we always say this, really, for PSU. Tempo's got to win this game <laughs> if they're going to win. Yeah, and he's he's trying his artist. He's been, like you said, finding those Shurima shuffles, finding the damage on a uh, Tifty. And I feel like uh, Dogbrain's going to need help down the bot side. But Sayonara looking for the engage, but is not going to pull the trigger there. Uh, it wasn't finding something that he liked. Flash 4 by Gen, Gen just to force the pool out from the Vlad, and that's gonna mean an easy inhibitor now for Michigan as they're gonna continue pushing this top side. Penn State trying to find the engage, but they're a little split up. Yeah, that was oh. actually interesting. Uh, oh, never mind, as you said, it, it goes there, he, there he goes. We have it, he brings back the tanks, but he separated Tempo, not able to find the Shroomish Shuffle as Tifty just backsteps it. Great kiting back by the Kogma. And it's going to mean most of the damage from Penn State is now off the table. As Gate is going to get chucked down. Now all the damage from Penn State's off the table. As Sayonara is going to drop soon as well. Dog Brain soon to follow. And Junrai, I don't think he can be the hero of this game. That's going to be game one going over to Michigan. Yeah, there's only so many times he can catch Type T out. He had his flash already that time. And he outplayed Tempo. And they finish off the game. So let's see if with these, uh... no, I didn't Did think we get post that. game. I was hoping we got uh, no. post game. I didn't know if we got it or not, but we don't, sadly. We get quit the desktop. Darn. <laughs> so that is going to be game one. We're not able to look at the damage, but we could probably just assume that uh, that damage on the Kogma is pretty, uh, pretty high. Pretty high. Most of the damage. Yeah. Uh, not to disrespect uh, Julius. But, you know, certainly his contributions were more in the Rome uh, than in those team fights, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, I, I agree with that one. Um, not really too much to say about that game. I think we really said it. It's just that Penn State mm -hmm. really found the engages just at the wrong times. They it waited was, until the Kogma had yeah. the Rage Blade and Gate it didn't. And yeah, there, then there was they went too on much that. bot lane focus. It, 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 this was not a situation where they were going to win through the bot side you know basically from level one we were surprised like just how much damage gated mm -hmm. uh and junray took in that level one they fell down like 30 cs very very quickly we saw the what's the the jinsu's rage blade come out very early for type t and yet they kept throwing people at those two in particular like you know obviously that you get the idea you gotta shut down the kogma you gotta shut down the kogma but you know, maybe they had to look elsewhere. Maybe they look to catch Julius in a Rome or something, collapse on him, use tempo, right? He's the guy out CSing Julius because Julius is roaming. He's looking okay. Get him involved in the play. Mm -hmm. You know, make the play around him, really. Try to catch maybe Julius out or something. Anything but bang your head over and over again bot lane because that's going to be turned every time when you have a Talia, yeah. a Nara with teleport in the top lane. Uh, and Sejuani was never that far from the bot lane. Yeah, and this is where it makes it interesting because we really can't say how picks and bans went, but just looking at the team comps, I feel like Michigan really won that pick. Like, they knew what they wanted to do, mm -hmm. and they executed it perfectly. The roams from Talia was 
p perfect. The devours from Tom Kench, uh, a little broken, it seemed, with uh, yeah. the fact that he was able to spit out uh, Tipti at, at uh, perfect times, but still. Uh, he was yeah, eight. they definitely played it better, I think. I, I don't really, really well. I can't really say that, that they outdrafted because, you know, they still had the Azir, which is, you know, strong mm -hmm. power pick. They had they Zach, had who is, Zach. you know, second to Sejuani, admittedly. You know, they still had the classic Braum. You know, if you don't get Tom Kent, you pick Braum. Or you... mm -hmm. That's the support meta right now. It's not fun. You got to deal with it. You know, they had some team fighting power in Vladimir. You know, Nar is maybe a little bit higher on that tier list again. But, you know, if, if they didn't have, like, the top guy, they had the second guy in, in pretty much mm -hmm. all positions. So, they just... I mean, I it really just ran through bot lane because you're not supposed to lose that hard to UV2 as... Varus, mm -hmm. you know, as a Varus lane, it, it should do better than that. Yeah, I guess, I guess one thing we could say, it's not like they, um, they did fall a little bit behind just from the early pressure yeah. from the Kogma, yeah. but they did at least die to the Kogma 2v2. It was more of yeah, these yeah, exactly. roams and a lot of it, it wasn't like coming up from single handedly yeah. snowballed out of control, like a legendary Kogma at 10 minutes, just in a straight 2v2. They controlled it, they contained it, they held it to, to just a CS def differential. Mm -hmm. But then they tried to throw the rest of the team at it to solve the problem, which wasn't going to work. Yeah, exactly. So with that being said, we're going to take a quick five-minute break. We're going to be back for a game two between Michigan and Penn State. We'll have to see if Penn State is going to be able to force a game three or if uh, this one's just going to end in an early 2-0 for Michigan. Uh, we'll see you guys in a bit.
Alright everybody, we are back for game two between Penn State and Michigan. Michigan did win the first one. And uh, we'll have to see if Penn State's able to force a game three or if this will be an early 2-0. So my name is Rudy if you haven't joined us for the last one. And I'm joining here with Doug. Uh, Doug, what do you think about uh, the picks so far for this game? It's interesting how they're kind of going back to the same style here. They got they went even more aggressive in the bot lane this time. You know, they had the Varus Kogma matchup, which Gata did not uh, excel in in the end. It was ultimately you know a sore spot for them. But this time they're going, they're doubling down. They got Zaya Rakan into a Braum, which is you know Braum and Tom Kent are kind of the reason you don't see Zaya Rakan so much anymore, because uh, it's just so obnoxious to deal with. The junglers, Silver's Might, Sayonara, doing the exact same thing. They were happy with what they had uh, last game. Gen Gen back on Nar. Uh, and we know he can play that very well. Dog Brain switching it up, grabbing Camille, which I, I do like into Nar in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, she's someone who can abuse him in his uh, mini Nar form a little bit more, jump on him, uh, put some damage down there, and scales very nicely into the late game. Um, so. We'll see. You know, we got Oriana Rise in the mid lane. Again, kind of Ori a second tier. I, mean, they don't, I, I never really can call her a bad mid laner. Just she never her is. kid is so basic. She's never bad. Uh, you know, shield, AoE ultimate, move speed, lane poke. She's kind of got everything you need. <laughs> I'll uh, actually never yeah. forget what the first president of the Penn State Club said in the very first season of League of Legends. He said it, and I quote, Oriana will never be a bad champion. Her kit does not allow her to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's kind and of the he's same been way, accurate like, for, what, we're in season 8 yeah. now and it's still the same? Kind of the same thing with Lee Sin. Like, sometimes there will be champions who are just so overtuned that they're... That Lee Sin's not bad. He's just not the top. Yeah. But again, like, he has so much in his kit uh, to make plays that he will never be a bad jungler. Mm -hmm. I think. So... All right. Yeah, absolutely. If you're ready, we're going to start in 3, 2, 1, go. And we're going to start with this one. And as we say, League of Stopwatch is what's been... Uh, <laughs> eight! We're at eight we're now. We're up. still rising. But top right. lane, completely void of stopwatches. And I'll have to see if yeah, this uh, changes the jungling paths from the junglers. Because if I'm coming into the game and I see that, my first gank's top lane. <laughs> absolutely. Just just not, not for the impact, but just because you're so tired of everyone stopwatching your yeah. stuff. Like, I'm just going top. I'm done with this. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's... It, it's Nar Camille, uh, which can be a bit tricky to gank from either side. Ooh, but, yeah. oh, boy. All right. Gen is going to be knocked back, or uh, forced to use his uh, jump backwards. But uh, luckily, that's usually when he starts level one anyway. So... Yeah, with, with Zaya. Yeah. With anyone else, you go Q. But since it's a Zaya lane, you would mm -hmm. start that W. So, yeah, it's a good thing he has Zaya as an AD carry. Not hurt by that at all. Uh, it looks like we're going to put a couple wards down from either side onto the blue buff, but it will uh, be Michigan backing off. Yeah, uh, right. You actually have the uh, the thing of noodles backwards, by the way. You are correct. I do. Wait, wasn't Penn State Red Sox? Yeah, I don't know. Game? I guess they just maybe it's oh, choice. they never switched. They both they don't they didn't switch. I guess I that is the case. Let me fix that then, because I I just assumed. That yeah, they no, were going I mean, to. The, the issue is like I'm I'm looking to you like colleges are not my my specialty, so I'm I'm like yeah. work, using your stream to tell me what side each one is. No, you're right though. Let me fix that. Not um, all right, so they just decided one of the teams just decided to uh, stay on red side, uh, or I or I guess just not switch. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's Penn State with the decision there. Most play teams do choose to stay on that blue side. Um, so yeah, so Penn State most likely elected to stay red, and I wonder if this was uh, just picks and ban strategy. Um, I'm assuming as much. Yeah, it, it is true. Like most people put uh, blue side as a higher priority just because there's so many power picks that you're mm -hmm. like guaranteed to get like three of them in those first five picks. Uh, so you you want to get that blue side. Uh, but yeah, PSU planning to do differently to stay in the series. Yeah, my well, my at the same time. and Jumper goes in. Does not land it. Not landing it. My assumption here, though, they wanted to do that because they came in this game planning to do uh, the lovers bot lane, and you can really yeah. only get away with that uh, by being able to pick them back to back. True. And 
I'm just kind of assuming what happened in Picks and Bands here. And then they either want a Dog Brain or Tempo to have the counter pick uh, opportunity. And if that was their plan coming into it, then it worked perfectly for them. They got exactly what they wanted. Uh, we're going to see Silvermite and Sayonara have a fight. But Silvermite's going in the wrong direction here. Um, I don't know how he's going to be able to find his way out of this one. He does find the Salon Sayonara. He might be able to get the Execute. It looks like what he's going for. Sayonara with the Flash Forward is not going to play by any of those games. And Silvermite will drop as a solo first blood goes over to Sayonara. That was kind of best case scenario for Silvermite right there. Yeah, there, there was a chance of him getting the Execute. I think if he flashed when Sayonara flashed, he actually would have had it. But I think he was still maybe... A uh, concerned about the potential for an E follow-up from Sayonara that you wouldn't dodge. But yeah, absolutely giving a solo kill over to the Zac jungle, as opposed to, you know, Zaya getting a, any contribution there, is definitely beneficial overall for the team. Still a good start for PSU. Sayonara gets a little bit ahead, gets a little bit more experience, some gold in his pocket, and can maybe start putting that in the lanes. We're actually seeing Essence go forward there, but actually Tipti is going to get knocked up by the Rakan. Can Zaya follow up enough? Now, it's just going to be a little bit of damage going on to the side of Tipti, but with fleeting footwork and that uh, potion in his pocket, I think he's going to be uh, be pretty fine and uh, yeah. get that health back up. One of the keys to this lane is that Rakan's W is on a shorter cooldown than Braum's E. Oh, Sayonara is now getting caught in the other jungle, except, you know, he's Zack, so... There's no... Or he has no flash, and I don't think he can get out of this one. Jenjen's going to be there, and we're going to see if uh, Dogbrain can come in and uh, help him out, but doesn't seem like it. So it's just going to be uh, both junglers going down pretty early. The teleport's going to come here just to delay, but I don't think he's going to be able to actually defend that. I don't agree with the teleport there from Dogbrain. Yep. I agree and, with you disagreeing with yeah. that teleport. Uh, it was not the play to make at the time. Jenjen Jen will get this kill here. So this time, Michigan gets the laners involved. Uh, getting Jen Jen a kill, gold, and the double buffs. So now both junglers have died on a, over aggressive invades on the blue side jungle. Uh, what's next? <laughs> Let's see if uh, support tries to invade or if the jungler's just going to go back and forth. We'll have to see. Um, now here's one thing I do want to ask you. Even though I play a lot of Tristana, I am not 100% sure on this. Is the knockup from Rakan bufferable with uh, yep. Rocket Jump? Yeah, yeah, all, all okay. CS, all CC. I wasn't much. sure if not Sword of were. Suppressions, I believe, mm -hmm. is bufferable uh, by Tristana. I do believe a Suppression would outright stop her in her tracks. I believe that's true, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no, I mean, it's the same as any other CC. Yeah, you can buffer Alistar Q, you can buffer... Lee Sin kicks if you wanted to. Uh, it's all about the timing, though. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of those things, like, as long as you are in that, um... Yeah. Uh, the animation of doing the jump, yeah. you're, you can get you away safe. with it. Yeah. But if you're in the process of jumping, you will get CC'd. Which is very strange. You don't see that with a yeah, lot of champions. I, I have to say, I don't know if I agree with that mechanic. I it's been in the game either. so long that it's like... Do you just deal with it? But mm -hmm. I, I would agree that, you know, maybe animations should be able to be canceled as a general rule. Yeah, there's a lot of things like that, too. Like, you could cancel the animation yeah. for a lot of things from Darius, but that the damage will go through, the CC will go through. Uh, it's just what's in the game. Um, and I'm trying to think of it, what animations it, it's, you can cancel, it, it, It's though. pretty much true for everyone. It's just Tristana is, is particular because she has so much, like, her, she's the most egregious because she has the most delay before yeah. she takes off. So it's more obvious when she does it. But, like, Ezreal does the same thing with his E. And he just shifts much smoother. So you're not going, what the heck is this nonsense? To the same degree. Yeah, but at least usually when you hit Ezreal, like, he will still have time that when he's on the other side, he's still CC'd a bit. But no, it's like the time yeah. that you would be he, CC'd, again, you're just moving he throughout the air. Tristana has this the travel time in the air. Yeah. So she's CC'd while she's in the air, but it doesn't count. <laughs> and this is coming from a Tristana main. Like, I know I know it's just bull, like how that interaction works. Yeah. But it, it, it's yeah. definitely... I, I, I don't want to just talk about this all game, but, you know, it, it's interesting that they made her, like... For rework, the focus O. Oh, they're gonna fight? Yeah, not really though, because it's Braum. But they made her rework about how she, you know, the Daredevil AD carry with all these resets. You wanted to jump in all crazy. Mm -hmm. 
And then, in the end, she is like the safest AD carry in the game right now. Yeah. With that W, with the buster shot as well. Uh, she's not, you know, the risky AD carry. Mm -hmm. Jen Jen, though, she going on a dog like... brain, doing quite a bit of damage. And I actually really like Jen Jen's style on this NAR. Just use that ultimate whenever you can, because oh, yeah. the majority of the time, if Dog Brain goes in for a fight, it's going to be on Mini Nar. He's not going to have that ultimate available anyway for fights. And what else is going to be able to use that in the next, what is it, like, minute and a half that it's uh, down for? So I do like that he uses it to get the damage when he can. And right now he's forcing Dog Brain to uh, back, possibly early. We'll have to see of what Dog Brain's able to get. He does pick up his Tiamat, so it's not too early that Dog Brain's going to be uh, out of luck here. But uh, yeah, I, I like what Gen Gen's doing. I'm going to. Probably adopt this in my NAR playstyle now. <laughs> it is Jen Jen once again. A solid CS lead here at 28, if my math is correct. It is. Which is Ooh. a lot. Ooh. The lockdown coming from the rise and the Sejuani is going to be a lot, but Tempo with a nice ultimate going to be able to defend himself. And bot side, we're going to see a gank by Sayonara. They are going to just delete Essence there as Tempo is going to be able to survive and get a stopwatch out from the rise as well. So, uh, a Good gank down on the bot side, and mid lane, almost a good gank on a Tempo, but uh, he's yes. able to get out alive. I would still call it a good gank. Tempo had to use every True. button he had, short of a warding totem, to get out of that. Uh, after, you know, use the, the stopwatch, use his heal, use his flash, use his ultimate. Uh, just everything used there. So you burn a lot. Uh, so you get Julius's flash out. I don't know. Was that teleport? Yeah, he wasn't teleport to lane earlier. He didn't teleport during that gank. That yeah, was okay. silly. He didn't, he didn't okay. teleport during the gank, of course. <laughs> Gen Gen, not taking a like, super favorable trade, but Nar can take, you know, less great trades frequently because as soon as you hit that Mega Nar, you get a lot of health back and he's going to keep chasing here. Uh, no ultimate for a little bit, but next time he transforms, he should have it up. It actually will be up during this <laughs> transformation as well. So it's up now. So Dog Brain. Um... He's Backing leaving. Off. He's, He's leaving. Yeah. Getting himself a little He's bit of uh, armor of there. Interesting here, Gen Gen, this time not going the Black Cleaver, but going straight uh, for the Frozen Mallet first. Uh, adding, I think, more tankiness in terms of uh, pure health. And then that slow as opposed to the speed and the extra damage from the Black Cleaver. I think he's uh, completely respecting the Camille Alda, and he realizes that in a fight, if he gets locked into the. Uh, the arena with uh, Camille, yeah. he's not going to be able to win that one. Um, one thing I do want to touch on from the gank down in the lane that happened so long ago is the power of this Rise Sejuani. As I say, that Sejuani is going to be in the top side. Can he land a great Glacial Prism? Flash Nothum is going to force the Flash away from Dog Brain, and there's the ultimate uh... from Silverbite, but I don't know if they could follow up. Um, definitely. Yeah. Ooh, nice Flash Engage coming out from Junrai there as they're going to go and on to. Tipty, but actually because the teleport they're forced back. Nice lockdown from the ultimate. And here comes Jun Jun going to go on to the Rakan, but the stopwatch going to keep him alive as Sayonara now comes in. Can they get a lockdown? He just finds that auto on the Tipty and the knockup coming in from Rakan, but there's the buffer that we were talking about earlier. He's able to get up a tempo. Doesn't get oh. any kills because of the stopwatches, but he will get them with a nice timing afterwards. And we're going to see the passive coming out from Sayonara. But, ooh, a little too far forward from the Rakan. He's going to drop. But that's still going to be a two for one in the long run in favor of Penn State. Yeah, stopwatches. I got to love that synchronized stop watching there. Ultimately, they both died anyways because Tempo was far enough to hold the dissonance. Uh, part of Oriana's kit there to, to secure that after the stopwatches came out. Uh, yeah, then Jun Rei went a little bit hard to try to kill Anar under tower. Uh, a little bit crazy, but this time, you know, look, reflecting back to last game when PSU threw a lot of stuff at the bot lane. This time, you know, they didn't wait for Tristana to hit, you know, Last Whisper, or not Last Whisper, but Infinity Edge or Static Shiv. You know, this is still a crit list, mostly attack speed list Tristana. And they bring people to help. Tempo roams in advance. And it's not a Talia mid, so it's just so much cleaner this time when they make that move uh, to force the play bot lane. You know, it's interesting, Gated and Junray are still a little bit behind Tipti and Essence in terms of CS. I mean, that will pretty much be picked up here by that wave. But they're not exactly crushing the lane even with this uh, stronger duo. But nonetheless, they're being smart when they bring people bot 
They're bringing everyone bot. And we're seeing Silver Mike gonna get caught out again. Can he have the CC to get himself out? It doesn't seem like it as Sayonara will pick up his second kill of the game. But again, the jungler is just going a little too far forward and getting caught out. As uh, you see Gen Gen and Dogbra up there fight, but even though they're uh, junglerless at this point, they're trying to get some damage on this tower. And this is going to mean that the Braum's going to get knocked up here, but Titi already really low. Here comes Sayonara. Can he get that auto? He's not going to be able to find it as he has, uses the stopwatch. I think that, that was a misclick, a misclick there. I think. Yeah. Unless he predicted that the buster shot was going to go on him. But as opposed to, I believe it was on Junrei. And so he tried to cancel it in animation. But why? Like, is also, he... he doesn't get hit back. He wastes it, and then they you keep chasing. Yeah, I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of. I, I think he just takes the buster shot at that point. Now, Dog Brain, yeah. he could be in trouble. Yeah, but he's going to use the ultimate on Gen, Gen who doesn't have a stopwatch to protect himself. So a good protection there from Dog Brain. He's going to protect himself, and I feel like Gen, Gen went a little too far there, not respecting the ultimate coming out from the Camille. Yeah, I don't know if you ran into spells either to force that transformation, oh. but oh, okay, Julius will be able to pick that up. But Gen, Gen had the full Mega Nar bar. I guess maybe just didn't have any spells to, to activate it. Yeah, his ultimate's down. At the time. So, yeah, definitely going a little bit hard. He was looking to get that health from that transformation, of course. Uh, first tower will go down to Julius in that top lane. Oh wait, he would have had W up. Forward. Here we go again! Yeah, Sayonara is going to jump on an Essence, who's going to get dropped again, his third kill, or death of the game. As, uh, this might be Dragon Pressure now going on in the favor of Penn State. We didn't talk about it earlier, but they did pick up an Infernal Drake. Yeah, I don't even remember. I don't even know when they picked it up. Obviously, I, I guess four minutes ago, but... But, um, yeah, so I was talking about the Gnar on the top side. Um, yeah. Gnar always has a spell available, because his W is a passive, so... He's always going to be able to use that in, in Mega Nar form. It's true. So why didn't he just W in place? I'm not really too sure on that. That's a good question. You know, Gen Gen, it's hard to criticize him in between these two games. He's been very good. He's up, you know, really high over Dog Brain in a matchup mm -hmm. that you know is at worst even for Camille. Yeah. I would say even maybe Camille favored. You know, she, she's kind of in that Aurelia class of being able to jump on Mini Nar and deal some damage. Uh, but Gen Gen playing very well in this matchup, obviously. Uh, now bringing some friends. Yeah, and the Glacial Precision is going to land, and that's just going to be the CC chain going on to Dog Brain as Gen Gen picks up his third kill of the game. So just great CC there by uh, Michigan. And there was really no getting out of that once that Glacial Prison land. And I see that the ultimate's still on cooldown. So he would have had to predict getting out with his uh, with his E, I believe it is. I don't really know the name of the... Me neither. His, uh, I don't, I actually, I don't even know if I ever played Camille now that I think about it. I don't play a lot of top lane I champs. played Camille like twice and went, this is not for me. <laughs> As I died like 26 times, so. Hextech Ultimatum is her ultimate. I got that. Yes. Hook shot. Okay, that's her E. Oh, that's easy to remember. Yeah, it's actually not not that complicated. It's yeah. Just, uh, just never really think about it. Hmm. All right. But yeah. Uh, that time, Silver's Might goes up with the ultimate already off cooldown for that gank. We saw them throw alt kind of at the tail end of a gank previously on Dog Brain, and then realized that they couldn't actually go any further because they didn't have health and they were diving a tower. Kind of an awkward gank that time. This time he brings the ultimate in advance, throws it out, and you're right, there really was nothing Dog Brain could do in that situation. So we see Gated not able to find the stun with the blade call there. So Tifty is actually going forward pretty aggressively. Um, Sayonara is now down here on the bot side. He is able to gank from this uh, distance away, but they're going to clear out the wards to let Sayonara come forward. I really like this plan here. Because now with the bot lane of Michigan, no. if they overextend just a little bit, they are going to get massively yeah. outplayed here. Usually, but. sweeping a lane brush, though, is a bit too much, yeah, uh, of, too a, much of, a, of a hint that something's going on. Oh, but Gen Gen is just brutalizing Dog Brain. That's going to be the flash. They're going to go for it anyways. And the knockup oh. is going to get through, even after the knockup jump went through. So that's going to be a kill by Titi. And he's going to drop easily. And now Essence, he might follow as well, but it's too far to no. tower. They're not going to go on it. They don't know where the Sejuani is, so they're going to play it safe. Pick up that kill, and now hopefully get themselves a tower. 
but we do see that uh, Julius is making his way down here on the bot side. Uh, never mind. Once, once again, we see a little bit of Junrei making the single man decision to dive the tower, and everyone else going, whoa, 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 that, <laughs> that's relaxed, man. Uh, but yeah, no, that was well done. You know, we could tell, absolutely, Tipti and Essence could kind of see what was happening. Like, they were at the other side of the lane, but unfortunately, Flash, Rakan mm -hmm. ultimates, uh, have a very long range when the W is included, but they're diving Dogbrain again. Yeah, Dogbrain is not able to lock Silvermite nice. under tower as Julius is going to be up here, but the Shockwave going to be enough just to push them back. It does miss, but it's at least going to keep Dogbrain alive. Uh, Sayonara might be looking for a jump here, but it looks like Michigan's going to be able to uh, get out of this one. So uh, really just a stopwatch on the side of Michigan being used there. Yeah, it was a great stopwatch from Silver's Might to interrupt the Hextech ultimatum from Dog Brain. That would have almost certainly secured them the kill had Tempo not showed up uh, in the nick of time. It can be tough to die of those second tier towers when people are back in base because it's just not as far to walk uh, to help out. They're going to get some mid lane pressure here though as Junrik is rooted up under tower. He just likes being under towers, man. But not going to quite get that tower yet. And actually Type T may be able to get this tower as they have uh, swapped Dog Brain to the bot side, and he will not be able to hold that against the Tristana. Zach is going to jump in. Dunray with the ultimate coming in, charming up everybody. Nice CC lock there coming out of the side of Penn State as they're able to pick up at least one. There's a second one going over to the red buff as that's going to be another kill dropping. Tempo there getting himself two. And we said Penn State lives and dies by Tempo in the mid lane. Yeah, absolutely. They're working around him. He's five and zero, and this time... The bot lane is in a good spot, and they're moving them around. They're getting the objectives. Two towers dead. Dogbrain's going to go in 1v2. I don't know if he's got this. No, nah, it's not looking too good for him, as he doesn't have a tower to back himself up. And that's going to be an easy kill going over to the side of Michigan. Um, I'm not sure if Dogbrain thought that he would be able to burst uh, Tipti out, but... I, uh, With no completed item, I find that hard to believe. Yeah. He, is he, he's working on... No, okay, I guess... Sorry, he's going, I guess, um, Titanic, as opposed to the Trinity Force. I was thinking for a second he was working on three different items, you know. Got the Trinity Force, the Ravenous Hydra, and the Sterics Gauge, but I'm pretty sure I guess that's a Titanic Hydra, which is atypical for Camille. I think usually they go the Ravenous. Mm -hmm. uh, usually you get pretty tanky as is, and the Ravenous gives the extra bit of damage, and that, that split pushing sustain to help you deal with someone like a Gnar who's just going to be poking you nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Uh, but I guess you're this far behind, 60 CS down. You want to get a little bit more tankiness to be effective in team fights. Julius actually played that really well. He, if you saw that, he threw a Q at the Gromp to kill it. So Sayonara didn't have another target in order to do the knockup from his Q. So uh, Julius, with a nice heads up play, is going to be able to get out of that gank. He did a backup from uh, Silvermite. So I don't think that he was in really any sort of trouble. But uh, just beautiful play yeah. there coming out from Julius. Yeah, when you're fighting the other team's jungle and everyone's off the map, you don't really know exactly how many people are right behind that, Zach. So, you absolutely play as safe as possible. Get out. Uh, the smart decision there. Uh, and now, yeah, a bit of a lull in the game right now. We got Drake coming up in 40 seconds. So far, PSU has gotten both of them. An Infernal and a Cloud Drake. Uh, oh. But yeah, again, Tempo looking very strong right now as well. Gated uh, has that two item spike. So does Type T, but I think uh, Zayad is a little bit more with that two item spike typically. Mm -hmm. um, even with the Essence Reaver, just a. Uh, yeah, we saw that AoE combo they were able to throw with the uh, Zaya Alt E into the Oriana Shockwave. There's a lot of team fighting power here that if uh, Michigan are a bit too grouped up, they're going to suffer for it. Now they're looking to establish some vision around Baron. Yeah, I feel like this is where the, the next major fight's going to be. Um, the Mountain Drake is up, which is going to be a good uh, Drake as we're transitioning now from the mid to the late game. But uh, Dog Brain going to get knocked out. Nice hookshot buffer, though, in order to get out from the ultimate from Gen Gen. But is it going to be enough as the ultimate's coming through? But that didn't land, apparently, as Dog Brain's able to get out of it. But is it going to be enough? The slows are coming in. Here comes the Hextech ultimatum as he's able to jump out. Nice. But oh, the no. stun is going to land from Silvermite. 
Yeah, this shield not going to be enough as Gen Gen able to pick up that kill, but he yeah. did delay quite a while. Yeah, Dog Brain actually played that about as perfectly as possible and died anyway. Uh, sometimes you just got to see good play rewarded, man. Mm -hmm. But he dies. That sucks. I guess, you know, I don't know if he could have gotten out a second before that fourth hit came in to activate the Sejuani stun. I, I doubt it. But, man, that was so close. Looks so good, though, at least. You know, he looked good doing it. That's what matters. Uh, now we got the split point. pushing rise. Uh, no actual stopwatch on Julius right now, so there is a little bit of a risk onto him that he can't just alt uh, stopwatch out. But I'm sure Zonius will come up pretty soon. Yeah, we can see he already has the arm guard in his inventory, so he's working on that. At which point he'll go full split push mode and never be caught because 8.2 rise is dumb. Everything being used on Tipsy there from Julius, but, uh, or not to really, sorry, Junray, but he's able to get out just because of how the buffering system works. Uh, a <laughs> and charm then shot. and a knockup doesn't matter. Able to get out of that and the quickness not enough because of the, because of the buster shot, you're right there. But, um, yeah, yeah so <laughs> that's Tristana for you. Pretty much. Uh, does she feel like a daring suicide lady carry? The way I play her, yeah. <laughs> but that, that's, Fair that, that's just how bad. That's just me being bad. Like that's that's not uh, how that's you're true. supposed that's to play. That's how I play her too. But in professional play, there's usually a different style. Uh, PSU continues to try to establish some vision around Baron. Keep that threat open. 24 minutes in now with a Mountain Drake. It is a possibility. And going in again. Yeah, they're going on the Essence. He's able to use his ultimate, but he is going to get caught out there as Gated is now on a killing spree. His third of the game he's going to be able to pick up there. And now here's the option. Are they going to keep pushing down mid? Are they going to go for Baron? They're actually going to go on a Tifty. The flash <laughs> from Sayonara is going to trade flash with Tifty. I love the idea there. But, no, that's um, great. Oh, the flash forward is actually going to be able to pick up with the Shockwave. That's going to be a good kill. Dog Brain might fall as well unless he can get out of this one but they are going to be pushing up the mid lane as Dog Brain does fall, but that does mean an inhibitor now on the side of Penn State. And are they going for the win here? No, They're going to play quite. it smart. They're going to back off. They actually forced everybody else to back off. Actually, no, they started again. They might have been able to get some inhibitor or Nexus Towers off that one as uh, Michigan, they're sticking with this push here. And I feel like Penn State not reacting fast enough are going to lose a little bit more than what they have to they they got an inhibitor while michigan didn't but they still lost that inhibitor tower bot side yeah, absolutely uh you know i felt like they could have gone further because in the end michigan didn't back off at all and they couldn't they decided to hold their recalls while i get a while i guess they were worried about essence uh stopping them and maybe type d getting in there and picking up some kills but they backed off pretty far ended up giving up their own bot lane inhibitor tower do keep the inhibitor up, so the minion pressure advantage will be in their favor. But with, you know, Dog Brain not being in a great situation in that 1v1 at the moment, having him bot side now with an exposed inhibitor is a point of concern for PSU. Yeah, that was one of the things. It's just a, a great game of, like, cat and mouse there that Michigan did one. Although they, they did lose the inhibitor, like we were saying, that that's... Um going to be really good for Penn State. It's just that they were able to get more than what they should have. They started backing, but when they saw that Penn State backed off first, they realized that they were going to be able to keep going with that and get more off of it And because it's going to take them a while to get there. So uh, Penn State being the first to react is going to be the one that lost more than what they need to. Yeah, there was no situation where I think PSU ends the game there just with how short the death timers are, but getting one Nexus turret... Just to force them back it's, off. It's not bad. Off, yeah. Yeah. Even if you just pressure it just so you have forced them to leave would have been enough. Um, yeah. But no, just just beautifully played there by Michigan. They played that uh, to the best of what they could have and got uh, what they needed. You're still on a ward, guys. Are they going to go for Baron here? Uh, Julius here, I believe, uses teleport earlier, so he doesn't have it. But I don't know if Dog Brain can fight this 1v1, so they are going to lose their inhibitor. But the 
the Baron will go over to Penn State as a fight does ensue here. Generate comes in with a nice Gnar ultimate. The Shockwave is going to be enough to delay, but are they going to be able to get out of this one? It's looking really good for Michigan as Tifty's going to flash forward. Can get it, get a kill. The stopwatch going to come through, but that's just a delay at this point. Not able to pick up kill on Tifty. So this means that Dogbrain is going to be the only one with a Baron buff as now they are down four members for the next 40 seconds. Wow, that's crucial. Yeah, this is 20 seconds on Junray, 40 seconds, as you said, on everyone else. They rotate around to the bot side and potentially push this all the way. They're going through mid. Yeah, this, okay. this could have been like a potential game-winning push by them because there's still 20 seconds on three members on the side of Penn State. It's only the support coming up, so they're playing this safe and just going for the structures that they could easily get at this point. Um, because by the time they rotate it, Bob, by the time they were actually hitting Nexus Towers, would they have been able to finish the game? They might have been since Gen, Gen uh, did have TP. Yeah. You know, they could have done some serious next level shit where Julius teleports on top of them, then Rise ults them back into the base. Mm -hmm. uh, save some time. I don't know. Uh, that maybe, maybe that doesn't come to mind immediately. Certainly, it's interesting that that's Julius now being the split pusher and not Gen, Gen. But nonetheless, a pretty forced bear in there for PSU. They burned it really quickly. We were just looking at Dog Brain for two seconds. We come back. The Baron's already dead. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, the great collapse there uh, from Michigan, as it does look like Michigan will give up the next Infernal Drake going into PSU's pocket. That's now four Elemental Drakes. And I guess we'll get one more since it will respawn before 35 minutes. But then that, uh, what's it called? The Elder Dragon will be pretty scary if PSU is able to secure it with four or five Elemental Drakes. Oh, it's going to be terrifying. Um, just having three makes uh, yeah. the Drake really scary. And with two Infernals, a uh, Mountain, and a, and a Wind Drake, this is probably the best three Drakes they could get um, for that Infernal Drake. Um, because it's really everything else is like getting extra regen is nice, but you don't really use it too much. Yeah, not, not in this down. team comp because <laughs> we don't see seed situations. As soon as people line up, to attack a tower, Sayonara is going over the top. He doesn't wait. So, Ocean Drake, yeah, not super impactful in this game. I don't know how many much people use Cloud Drake either, but definitely two Infernals, you know, three Infernals if they get that Elder Drake finished uh, is very nice. And it will be another, the last Elemental Drake will be a Mountain. So they could double up on Mountain potentially. Get some really fast Barons going. I mean, the last one disappeared pretty much in the blink of an eye. So I don't know if they need another. <laughs> No, they really don't. They they have a very fast Baron taking team, as was evident in the last time, which, like I said, surprised me. I was I was even thinking, it's like, yeah. oh, should I go back to the Baron? It's like, oh, no, they just started it. It shouldn't be back up. We go back, it's not 2k health. And it's like, oh. oh it wasn't anything completely well, obvious. You know, there was no Blade of the Room King, Kog'Maw, Callista. Sign I was going in. He's not able to find Gen Gen on that one, as the Glacial Person is going to stop the Engage coming in, but... It's just going to be uh, even just a little bit of uh, damage going on each side. Nothing really too special being used. I guess the flash from Gen Gen was the only thing bl uh, blown. So you're not going to have any flash NAR engages for the next two minutes. Yeah, so I feel like good initiation by Sayonara once again. Starting that off, Gen Gen of a half health, but now they're in a bit of a defensive situation here as, I guess, does Dogbrain even have uh, Baron left? I don't no. know. It's probably down at this point. Yeah, so that Baron completely gone at this point. And now we are in a bit of a siege situation here, but I, I don't expect this to last very long. As they will certainly look to break this as soon as possible. And there is AoE potential here. Throw the ball on Sayonara, send him in there. Have Gated throw down some feathers. Mm -hmm. You know, people could die very quickly in the right situation, but they just need to find that moment. Yeah, and Gen Gen's already, uh, he's chunked down fairly low, a little, oh, little above half health. He's at about 60 right now. Luckily, he's almost gnarred up, so he will be able to, uh, get a lot of that health back. But, uh, Junray is going to be able to find the Tristana. Tifty has forced his way out, but is it going to be enough damage already? As is going to jump there as Tempo picks up the kill. Gen Gen's going to be soon to follow as Dogbrain picks up that one. And he gets himself a double kill, actually. Three very quick kills going on to the side of Penn State. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've always been looking for Sayonara to start that off. That time, you know, they had the heavy initiation support too. Junray jumped in onto Tifty. 
CC'd him up, and then Tifty was able to get away with the rocket jump. However, Tempo flashing in after. I believe Gated even flashed in too uh, to take out Tifty. So that's three people going down. Genshin actually has a Phantom Dancer going much more towards the split pushing uh, than the team fighting. And you know, who was able to be taken down very quickly there. They're going to try to go all the way here. They're going to be able to lock down Julius, and then Knockup's going to land. Julius is going to get deleted there. Not able to do his combo with his ultimate and the stuff and the. Zonia, so he's gonna be get dropped here. Sayonara able to get out alive. They're not able to get any Nexus Towers, but they do pick up that inhibitor. So again, Penn State with the minion pressure down that mid lane. Yeah, once again they, they re-break that inhibitor and they keep their base intact. Two very crucial things. Uh, you know, I guess just dive in for the, the Julius kill, just because it does give him a little bit of time uh, to go back. Recall and reset before Julius respawns. So before you, Michigan, can really look to counter anything. And Baron's not up for a minute. Uh, and I have to imagine that will be a priority here as both teams are trying to look to close out this game. Yeah, it's just seemed like the death towers were just not quite long enough. We're now 33 minutes in. And it's at the point here where the next team fight is probably going to be the game. Yeah, it does feel like that, you know, twice in a row, it, it's almost felt like it could be the game. It just doesn't quite get there, but especially, you know, with Baron-empowered teams, you know, potentially being on the table here 30 seconds in uh, before Baron spawns. Yeah, uh, so there's, there's some open bases here. So that's going to be caught up in there. Actually, going to look at the focus on the Essence instead, who again dies for the sins of his teammates there. Um, that's sometimes what the Braum does, as he's going to keep his jungler alive, which is 100% the more important one. But this is going to give a lot of pressure over to Penn State, who's going to look to try to get this Baron. Uh, especially if they do see that Gen Gen's on the bot side split pushing, so this would be a 5v3 if anything. Um, we do see Dogbrain back off, and it looks like the fight's going to continue, but Red Team picks up that very fast. Penn State will be able to have their Baron now, as Dogbrain versus Gen Gen fight comes in here, but... Dogbrain's actually doing really well in this fight. Sterek's helping out. He's going to be able to win this 1v1 in the Hextech Ultimatum as Gen Gen try to fight for his life at this point, but that's going to be Dogbrain able to win yeah. that fight. So even though he he basically <laughs> built for this 1v1, and he lost it. Yeah, well, I mean, he has that the Frozen Mallet in there. He has the Black Cleaver. Those are two, you know, make a very potent fighting combo. I still don't think Nar is supposed to be a straight-up all-in yeah. Camille. Camille's all-in is super... Super strong. It's about poking him down first before you go in and, and getting that. And yeah, I think, you know, Dog Brain had picked up a couple kills last time Gen Gen uh, had fought him. So I think maybe a bit surprised by how strong Dog Brain was. Still doesn't even have a Trinity Force completed. Wins that, partly using that Sterex. You know, another part of that, that duel could have been, you know, popping that Sterex first and then going back in for another fight later as opposed to hard committing mm -hmm. uh, to that fight. Now the Trinity Force has been completed. Dog Brain probably just straight up wins this 1v1 now at this point. Yeah, I can't see um, a 1v1 scenario where Gen Gen's able to just straight up defeat him. Um, he, he's building, it seems like more for Mini Gnar than Mega Gnar at this point. So yeah, it would be a prolonged fight that Gen Gen would have to win. Uh, one where Dogbrain is forced to kite backwards, but is not able to because of the Frozen Mallet. But then, I don't know if the fight will last long enough for you not to get into Meganar. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to collapse here, but yeah, that's the the not tanky Nar at all. Getting half health by Tempo there. This is a nearly full build Tempo. Death Cap, Void Staff, the Andres. Uh, high, high damage, and not a point of MR on Gen Gen this game, unlike last game. And it looks like he's going for like Death's Dance with that uh, Vamp Scepter too. So. Yeah, maybe Blade of the Rune King, I think, is a popular mini NAR item. Uh, tough to say, I don't know if we'll even get to find out, to be honest, because the Baron push is starting and the minions are starting to come in on that mid lane too, so. He can look for PSU to start really breaking his base open. All right, he has the gold for Bilgewater Cutlass right now, and he didn't upgrade those two items to it. So I'm assuming that it is going to be that Death Stance. That would be a... I don't think I've seen many Nars go Death Stance, so that would be an interesting one uh, for me. But, yeah, we, we will see. Uh, well, let's see. Do we have enough time, or will this be a mystery? <laughs> 
as Penn State's trying oh, to uh, use his Baron to pressure up. Not able to crack the base just yet, so they're going to rotate mid, try to push the minion waves. They do not have a turret in this mid lane anymore, and the inhibitor is going to spawn soon. So it seems like their next uh, objective is to try to get this inhibitor for a third time. Yeah, so I Zaya not a strong sieging AD carry. You know, no uh, rapid fire cannon on her, so not really going to be able to even chip away at that tower with so much threat still here between that Sejuani uh, and that Gnar uh, initiation potential. PSU has to be very careful playing this up. And it looks like Baron will just expire this time. Uh, so once again, they get Baron, but they're not able to do anything with it. At least this time, you know, they all lived with Baron. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would be a little concerned if I was PSU right now. Just they have so many advantages. They have five Drakes. They had the Baron. They're just not able to find the way to close it out. Yeah, Michigan. And, you know, there's that Tristana timeline. She's six items now. Rise is six items. It's, it's getting a bit concerning, I think. Yeah, Michigan has been playing these Baron power plays perfectly, uh, not allowing Penn State to get any ground. Um, and it shows the gold lead, which is basically nothing at this point. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's less than a thousand gold, and that just shows how close this game is. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually, uh, they're they're a bit tiny bit behind in gold. Michigan is, but it's concentrated so much more on two people. We have two people: the mid laner Julius and Type T on Tristana breaking the 400 CS barrier. So they're actually the first ones to hit the the six item power spike. So maybe it is gated and tempo actually a little bit behind in the item curve. So PSU has a little bit more to go before their uh, gold stops mattering. Yeah, Joe, uh, really, yeah. the biggest gold lead is actually in the supports right now, uh, about 1,600 on this side of Junray. Everything else on Penn State, they're basically losing that battle. It's actually true. It's only Sayonara and Junray actually head in gold right now. So not the two you want to have the advantage. Uh, but then when you look at it, it's like it's 300 for the mid lane, 700 for the bot lane. At this yeah. point, not really meaning all too much. That no. extra pickaxe, that extra amp tome, not going to do anything in these fights. Yeah, but I mean, there's a difference between you know an extra pickaxe and a, you know just enough gold to finish off a power spike. Sayonara's going in though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> that is the combo from Julius down yep. though, and that, no, that is, is going to be pretty massive. You get that all, and almost more importantly, you get that Zanya's cooldown on. Uh, will be a little bit shorter with Julius. It looks like it's going really fast, but they're going to fight this. Yeah, Glacier Prison is going to just barely miss as they're now going to get engaged on. Here comes Sayonara. Can he find the lockdown on who he wants? Looks like he's going to go on to Silvermite as he's actually going to pop there. So that's going to be the passive out from the Zach for the damage coming in for Penn State. That's uh, two kills for one at this point. Gen Gen's forced out. Double kill going over to Zaya, but everybody from Penn State. Really low. Here comes Tinti. Is this his time to shine? No, it oh. isn't. The blade caller going to come in. He's going to be able to pick up that kill. Tinti saw the resets and he just was not able to get them. Yeah, that's something you have to be so cautious of with Zai. You have to watch those feathers. Wait for them to clear off before you go forward because she can just pull them back and rip you to shreds. And that could be super costly now. The difference between them completely winning that fight off the Tristana resets. And now losing an Elder Drake, which is a huge Elder Drake for PSU. Mm -hmm. Five elemental Drakes have been picked up. You know, two of them are infernal. This is such a huge combat power. Yeah, Path to this Pence is going to be able to back, get any of their last items that they need, and then go for the final push. Um, oh, by the way, we were talking about what the Gnar was building. It's not going to be anything that we were thinking of as yeah, he, he sold sells. them. It's, he's like, I need to be tanky. Because, you know, we saw Genji in the middle of the fight, and he didn't really do a hook of a lot. He was in there for maybe five seconds, took a lot of damage, then had to Ooh. jump out. They are forcing this Baron, though. They have to go forward. They actually might be able to, de to uh, defeat it fast enough. As here comes uh, Silvermite, but Dog Brain's here. They only got it down to about 5,000 HP as the fight's going to come out of Penn State. This is five Infernal, or what? five just Drakes going in their favor. As the ultimate from Julius, able to save his teammates, but not himself. As How everyone else is going to run away. There? Sayonara oh. going to jump in. Can he find the Tristan? He's going to be able to find it, but the QSS is going to come through. Will the damage from Dog Brain be enough? Tempo is actually going to be the one to pick up the kill. And that's now going to be a 2v5 as Penn State going to push down, try to get the win. 
as they still have this Elder Drake and they're using it beautifully. Yeah, I feel like Michigan saw the writing on the wall there with the Elder Dragon have being picked up. They knew they had to absolutely get this Baron, but Tifty wasn't on the table yet. He was still dead. Now PSU's going to be pushing in, and they're looking to end this. Yeah, they have so much damage with these Double Mountain Dragons. It's going to be tough. They're going to jump in onto Tifty. He is going to drop. That's going to be the kill. Going over the support as Penn State forces a Game 3. Uh, absolutely coming in. You know, I can't really call it a decisive game. It was only a 6,000 gold lead in the end. Uh, but definitely a much improved game plan and execution from PSU this time around. Uh, from working around their strengths, uh, particularly in the mid lane, bringing more people to the parties when they want to party in the bot lane. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, just rotating around that pressure, taking down towers... And ultimately, just executing team fights better because you know they did all that stuff I said early, and it, you know they didn't fall behind like they did last time. But in the end, it was like really, really close in gold. I think even a lead for Michigan at some points. But just they executed the team fight so much better uh, with gated and tempo throwing out so much AOE damage. People just melted in front of them. So very yeah. well done this time. Yeah, it definitely wasn't as decisive as game one was. That was, no. from the get-go, almost Michigan's game the entire time. This was just back and forth, like you said, the entire time. I don't think the goal lead went past, like, two, 3,000 at any point in yeah, this game. Yeah, it was 6,000 when they ended, but, like, you know, that's counting the yeah. Nexus that's uh, kind of the, gold. Yeah, and... Not counting the last five minutes when they won that big fight yeah, exactly. um, in the top side. It was a very, very close game. Uh, something that I wish I could see the gold graph as we go through, but we don't have any of that stuff because that's how the spectating Darn. works. Uh, one day we'll be able to get that. So with that being said, we're going to have one last five minute break as we're going to go into game three shortly as we'll see who's able to win uh, their game if it's going to be Michigan or Penn State. We'll see you guys soon.
Alright everybody, we're going to be in the third and final game now between Michigan and Penn State. Uh, yet again, my name is Rudy, I'm joined here by Doug, and Doug, I'm really interested to see what happened in this picks and bands. I am so happy. First game, we had seven stopwatches. Uh huh. Last game, we had eight. This one, we have nine! Dog brain They're the only counting one. in order. Yeah, dog brain the only one not on the stopwatch uh, table no, you, at this point. That, that's fantastic. I love it. Just counting up seven, eight, nine. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, Gated and Junray going back to this lane. It worked for the last time. Well, they won the game. You know, they still actually didn't have a super strong laning performance, but they were able to make it count when the ganks came from Sayonara. Yeah, Sayonara mm -hmm. though, he's got Nunu this time. This time, I'm assuming escaped bans. Or maybe Zach was taken out, so they put uh, they changed up their priority. Yeah, so uh, Silver's might he get Sejuani again though? Yeah, the thing though is something that's on my like my questions right now is like how did Dogbrain steal Nar away from Gen Gen? Mm -hmm. How did Sayonara get Nunu? Like how did that get through? And with True. Nunu being taken, how did Tempo get Corky? Because Corky and Nunu, yeah. that's a great combination to have. Yeah, I would have to assume it's a Rise first pick here, uh, coming out from Julius. Opening up, I guess uh, Nunu and Nar would have been the, the second and third picks, I would imagine. Uh, but yeah, so we got Corky mid lane too, which I'm really happy about. Uh, it's someone who I think plays a bit more in Korea than in NA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look at like the top tier of mid laners right now, you got Zoe, you got Rise, you got they do all this, and uh, Malzahar, they do all this late game damage, and they have so much utility. Corky is kind of very different. He's just pure damage. He yeah. will out damage just about every other mid laner in the game if he gets to to 40 minutes. But, you know, he's got one CC on, what, an eight-minute cooldown? So, <laughs> not the utility mid laner by any means. Uh, but he will bring a lot of damage into team fights. Sayonara potentially giving a little bit more attack speed. No one will be able to take advantage of the buff Nunu aspect of it, where they get extra ability power. Corky doesn't. There little isn't anyone bit. on this team building ability power. Doesn't Corky get a little bit of like an AP ratio though from his? Oh, is it percentage? He has AP ratios, though? but he never. Yeah, it's a percentage. Oh, I didn't know. If it's I a thought percentage, it was just a so flat. they need to build AP okay. to get AP. So no one is going to be yeah. building ability power on this team. So they're not going to be able to get. Uh, the buff part, you know, there's no Azir or even Kogma with, you know, a Rage Blade mm -hmm. uh, coming in here. But nonetheless, they still have Zaya, they still have Corky, even Nar in a, in, in a pinch, you know, can use that Blood Boil. So well, uh, we'll see exactly how they put it to use. But Ezreal here is interesting because uh, he's definitely fallen down the tier ladder with the nerfs both directly to himself, mm -hmm. where Mystic Shot does less damage until it hits level 5. Uh, and then... Klepto uh, was nerfed as well. I'm wondering what he's running. I would assume I... still Klepto, but... Um, probably, we'll but we don't really have any on. way to check until we get in there. Yeah. Like Footwork still could probably be okay with him, because he could proc it off his Q as well. Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't crit, so he doesn't get quite as much healing. Well, anyway, let's yeah. see how it goes. We're going to jump right we'll in see. We might as well start. We might as well get yeah. going. Yeah. In three, two, one, go as uh, we're going to be underway in this game, as it's going to be Penn State again on the red side, Michigan on the blue side. They stay these sides for all three games. Yeah. And we'll have to see what everybody's going to go. As uh, we do see in chat here, uh, Alawi with heal on the top lane. That's most likely because yeah. the Alawi is going Spellbook and yeah, is going to gonna be switch spellbook. that out. It's definitely, I, it's an interesting summoner to take. I mean, I guess you could, there's like the flexibility aspect of it. You know, you can use it uh, not, not just to give yourself a heal, but to get some movement speed to maybe help secure a kill or give you that extra movement speed to escape a gank. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's a couple ways you can use it to, to get the most out of it when all the other summoner spells that you would take are pretty, you know... There's one use for them, and, and you use it, you know, either aggressively if it's like an ignite or barrier defensively. Because um, Ryan yeah. also went heal in the mid lane, and I'm assuming it's down, it's around the same path. He's yeah. realizing he's going to get chunked out fairly early from Corky, it, so he's going to yeah. need that little bit of extra sustain to stay safe. It also boosts your 2v2 power, so if you get ganked and then you you counter it, you know, with Silver's Might showing up, 
you definitely have a, a much bigger advantage than Dog Brain and Tempo, who both just have teleport flat out. But the most likely scenario is neither Julius or Gen Gen even use their spells. Uh, and then go back to base, switch to teleport, and act like any other normal solo laner. And it looks like the Ezreal does have Klepto. So we're going to be seeing... Yeah, he's got a ward. So there we go. Yeah, I, I believe I saw Sayonara with Guardian as well. Uh, Nunu really doesn't have great keystones. Is one of the the reasons why he fell so far out of favor before Riot completely overbuffed him. Mm -hmm. uh, Riot so... does that quite a bit, though. Yep. There's been quite a few cases of way too much buffing. Once again, PSU... Honestly, not getting a hard shove here to get that level one or the, or the level two boost. Uh, yeah, that Rakan and Zaya like. They actually lost out on it. They fell behind on it. Now they're actually going to go on a Tithi who's going to be ignited, forced out right away. But Essence is going to be able to use a Devour and negate it. The Flash is, and Heal not going to be enough as First Blood going over to the Tom Kench. Can he find a Devour? He's actually going to be able to get away, but Tipti oh, picks up man. that kill regardless. Two very fast kills going yeah. to the bot side. I just caught on to one of the problems, too. Gated had Q first. If you're doing the Zaya Rakan lane, you start W on both champions. You get that attack mm -hmm. speed on both of them when you pop Zaya's W. It gives you extra shoving power, gives you extra trading power when Rakan jumps in. Uh, with the W. Now, Sayonara is going to look to clean something up. I don't know if he can do it, though. No, I don't think he can. And that auto, if that went through, that would allow a stun and a devour to come out from Essence. So, Flash come out from Sayonara in a little bit of a... of a... quite a bit of a... I, I, he just thought that he was going to get something there. I don't think he was going to be able to get that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, it's tough to say. Uh, he was able to get Essence's Flash, I guess, and trading for a laner Flash is kind of useful uh but yeah it, i mean this honestly speaks a little bit to the last game too where they had the the much stronger laning and they still didn't come out super ahead of tifty in essence and i think it just gated and, and generally maybe we don't understand quite the power of zyra Khan and where it comes from uh, so you know it's interesting that, that a q start is what gated went with as opposed to w and, and then they lost not only uh, level two, but they lost both of their lives in the process, and that's obviously not how that lane is supposed to go by any means. Especially against an Ezreal, who's more for the scaling in the long term. Yeah, it's really hard when you, like, it's you shouldn't be ever losing the shove to an Ezreal because most of his stuff is um, single target damage. He doesn't really have any AoE, hence his, until his ultimate. So, the fact that he was able to out-shove you shouldn't actually really ever happened no and especially like i saw he hit most of his cues on champions it wasn't even you know pushing minions with cues so which is one of the reasons they lost the level two all in because they were already poked pretty hard but mm -hmm. uh, they should have been able to get that shove a uh, much better tipsy in essence have been a pretty yeah. consistent force for university of michigan they got camped pretty hard the second game uh but showing up in style again or game three after pretty much destroying game one. Yeah. And just to go back to that fight in the bot side, it's not like it was Ezreal got uh, a Klepto Elixir and then they decided to go all yeah. in because they had such a huge a advantage because of that. Yeah, and not only did they that, but that was the engage from Penn State too. They're yeah. the ones who won at that fight. Yeah, it's, it's just a misplay straight up uh, from this combination. Uh, maybe again misunderstanding the the power and where it comes from and that's gonna hurt them a lot in this matchup and now silvers might using that power of the bot lane to get in here i want yeah i don't think he was setting up a dive so much as getting some deep vision mm -hmm. i probably spotted sayonara on the way it looked like briefly he was curving to go into tower considering his escape routes uh so nunu has given chase uh, Tempo doing all right in this mid lane, trading pretty evenly with Julius at this point. Uh, Corky uh, takes a bit to get going, really. Uh, Trinity Force, uh, Sork Shoes, of course, is a great power spike for him. Uh, but really, he just keeps scaling throughout the game. 
Uh, mm. Probably one of the higher late game damage champions, period. And we'll look to see if they can even get there, though. And yeah, Dog Brain there. Wait for Genjin to use his ultimate just to push him back out. So, using that uh, ultimate very defensively. But uh, Gen Gen definitely got the better of that trade. Um, but that was because mostly because of the heal summoner spell. So here's actually the thing to think about. Dog Brain could back and teleport back in the lane, but Gen Gen can't unless he gets it's rid of It's an even splash. lane though, so Dog Brain won't gain a lot from TPing. I would think they honestly both just walk to lane and Dog Brain saves that. Um, we'll see. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to both walk. I mean, obviously Gen Gen has to. He will still change to teleport, uh, which is an interesting decision, but... I guess there's a chance it, it cools down uh, while heal is a pretty short cooldown, I think. Actually, no. No, no, it's, it's longer than, than Exhaust and Ignite. I can't remember exactly where it stands, but nonetheless, he's switching there. They're all walking to lane, and they'll just meet there and resume hostilities, I assume. Yeah, we'll have to see if Penn State plans on something, because he will have that teleport advantage for the next minute, minute and a half at this point. So I would love to see Penn State try something here, just because yeah. the Allow is not going to be able to follow. And they have double teleport, where Julius at this point on the rise doesn't have teleport as well. So yeah. they could force a 4v2, 4v3 very easily. It is Tom Kent Ezreal, though. And again, it's Tom Kent Ezreal that's ahead. I mean, that you know, the double kill bot lane uh, got typed his tier, so it's not exactly like he's snowballing out of control in, in the power spikes here. Uh, but it's a tricky lane to gank, and if you use these teleports and you don't get the kills, then that's mm. so much, you know. I, we almost think Dog Brain just saves it to pressure Gen Gen even harder, you know, burn out uh, that corrupting potion, then go back to base and teleport to keep the pressure up on Gen Gen, use it, you know, to gain a personal advantage rather than a team wide thing. Uh, and then similar for Tempo. Yeah, so I blew this back, but kept his uh, heal there, trying to stay safe in the mid lane. And to allow him to stay fairly even with this Corky, he's about uh, 15 CS behind at this point. But uh, that was an early rise against an early Corky. That's going to happen. And now with Rise getting a lot more ability power, a lot more damage here to clear these minions, it's going to be a lot easier for him as Silverlight, or Silvermite, being caught out yet again, but is uh, going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah, uh, of course, Julius actually hasn't built any AP yet, but he does have mana, which still helps him deal damage. Mm -hmm. Less so than it used to, but still it's, a, still it's useful. Gen Gen Dog Brain going to continue to trade it out. Uh, we can see Dog Brain starting to get the better in this lane. Yeah, Dragon's going to come that in. That was a close one. Yeah, that ultimate for coming out from Silvermite just short on a gate it, so he's able to... Uh get out of that one pretty easily so that is going to be a dragon going over inside of penn state and while be behind ocean drake is a really great drake to get yeah absolutely at this point the sustain is very nice you can see tempo needs to sit back a bit getting poked out a bit by julius has the corrupting potion already though but adding a ocean drake to that will be very very nice and again something like the poke of ezreal the, the constant q spam uh, gated and junray uh, should be able to make use of that as well. So yeah, absolutely. Ocean Drake, very nice. Probably the best early game Drake, I think. Uh, obviously doesn't scale as well for most team comps. It's rare we really see uh, poke siege comps, especially at this level. But there's a little bit of that element with Corky Nar, but not a lot. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, Tifty now here with that Elixir of Iron, giving uh, Essence a little bit more movement speed. Um, this is a weird thing with uh, Kleptomancy. You never know what you're going to get out of it. And sometimes you just get a giant Ezreal. Yeah. Easier to hit with skill shots, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, but actually gate it. Put the damage on the so much damage. But Essence is going to come in to uh, get rid of him. But yeah, gate it. Taking very low. Forced to heal as well, as Julius is pushing Tempo out in the mid lane. So... We're actually seeing these uh, fights, these 2v2s, the 1v1s, going in favor of Michigan. Uh, we'll have to see if they go to do anything, but uh, still nine stopwatches on the table. We'll have to see if anything, if uh, what's going to happen with them. Yeah, I'm just thinking ahead to like season 13 of League of Legends, where Riot introduces a size mechanic. It's like if you have an elixir of iron, you're actually too big to fit in Tom Kench's mouth. <laughs> 
<laughs> like Cho'Gath out of the question. Elixir of iron. Yeah. Lit too big. At this point, uh, size doesn't really tower, matter. Though. Yeah, Tipsy's gonna be able to get that, but uh, here comes Sayonara. Ooh. He does have the teleport coming in. Can he get this slow enough? Tipsy's gonna be pretty low as we already have all five They're members all here. down here. And I think the Devourer is now gonna be used, but Tipsy pretty low. Is gonna be checked out. Gen Gen, I didn't even see you over there as you're gonna get locked down. There's the first stopwatch being used, but is it gonna to amount to anything? It's gonna to amount to one kill. Nice ultimate coming out from Dog Brain as he's able to land at least two onto the wall there. Essence is now going to drop. So one stopwatch down, but two kills going over to the side of Penn State. Yeah, I definitely feel like that's a bit of a miscommunication there in terms of exactly what they were trying to achieve out of that for you, Michigan. You know, they did a pretty good job of escaping, and then Jen Jen showed up. Here comes Junray under tower. Stopwatch is two being used immediately. Junray is going to be able to survive. Gated is going to drop. Can't even get out. He doesn't take the Rizal out as he's going to drop. So that's going to be another two kills going on Penn State as Junray loves going in under towers, and he gets yeah, exactly. his team two kills. <laughs> One thing you should not surprise you is Dunray is going to die of the tower. Even if the rest of his team is not. That time they were behind him though. Mm -hmm. uh, going deep under that tower. Uh, making it work. And yeah, it was Jen Jen you know, teleporting kind of in the middle of nowhere. I feel like he should have canceled that. You know, or just not even made that call in the first place. Because really it was Type T, Essence, and Silver's might just doing everything they can to escape. They weren't really looking to turn. Julius was still a ways out from being there. And it was just everyone from PSU right there at the time, uh, you know, waiting until the tower falls to get them to really commit uh, a bit deeper and then pull the trigger. And they're able to get four kills and the return tower, giving them a slight gold lead at this point. So very well done by PSU, but, you know, questionable still from Gen Gen. As not, he didn't just commit himself. He essentially committed the rest of his team when he went in there because then they had to go back and try to bail him out with slivers on the health bar. Yeah, now uh, Silvermite is going to get uh, locked down here by two of the least damaging members on the side of Penn State as the rest of uh, Michigan is going to collapse. And here comes the first stopwatch being used. The Acquired Taste is going to stay on a Junrai, though, or Sayonara, sorry. But here comes Junrai going and be able to knock up Silvermite. That's going to be another kill going over to Tempo. His third of the game as now Julius is trying to pick up something but not quite able to. And this might be a Rift Herald going over there in Penn State. Yeah, absolutely. With a Nunu, you have to think they'll be able to secure this objective. They're going to go for the blue buff first. Maybe try to keep Julius uh, down a little bit more. But yeah, as we see, Tempo. Ooh, yeah, I don't think they're going to go any much further. Actually, Tempo. Valkyrie is as I say that. Uh, but we have the Trinity Force. We have the Sorcerer Shoes from Ooh, Tempo. So they're Sayonara. looking to fight. Yeah, he's going to be locked down. Because the rest of his team had to use that Blast Cone, he was not able to get out. And now Tempo forced out. Here comes the Realm Warp coming out from the rise, but not really able to get too much off of that. And we're gonna have a 1v1 on the bot side here, but Dogbrain currently losing that, this one, as Gen Gen is forcing him out. Didn't even have to use the ultimate from the from the Alawi. And now with Dogbrain and Mininar, Gen Gen should be able to uh, bully this lane pretty hard. But in the top side, gate it, just trying to defend this tower. He's doing quite a bit of damage to Tifty there, as he's forced to devour out. And that's just the red buff doing so much work for gate it. Absolutely. Ezreal with any buffs at all. Uh, it's just obnoxious. Blue buff, he just spams Q forever. Red buff, when he hits you, it's just brutal. You take the extra damage, you get slowed. Double buffs, just just stay away. Oh, wait. There's just done right. Are they going to go for another tower dive? It seems like he wants it, but Silvermite's going to be there. Yeah, but, that would um, be a risky one. Junrai's still going to do it, because I think it was Ben Franklin that once said that there's three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and Junrai going under tower as he's going to get the double knock up here. Can they lock down far enough to teleports come in? Now there's four members on the side of Michigan as Tempo going to try to get a pick up a kill. He does find Silvermite. Sayonara is going to drop though. And the ultimate, or the Valkyrie, sorry, coming out from the Corky. Just a one for one trade. And they get to, you know, ultimately, I got to give that uh, to PSU. You're right. Junray, super aggressive with his tower dive, always. Uh, and they trade junglers, but yeah, it's going to be Jen Jen and Julius. Uh, burning their teleport to get to that play and everyone except Sayonara managed to get out so worth it and now they're able to sneak in and potentially even get a dragon without the jungler even evolved. So yeah so another dragon go to Penn State and we saw in the last game how much these dragons helped them out they were able to get I think it was what five in the last game plus that Elder Drake that basically gave them the win 
and they're able to do very similar stuff this time. They're still slightly behind this gold, but it's not really mattering at this much. 500 gold, 16 minutes in, that's really nothing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it just seems like PSU is never going to get an early game goal. Michigan, they just do consistently get outlaned uh, bot and top. Uh, the top differential is not so bad this time. Dog Brain keeping it, you know, within 20 or so at the moment. 16 at this point in time. Uh, but yeah, you, you know, it, it's building towards the late game. Tempo again is going to be the key. He's on, you know, a later game champion with that Corky. He's hit a decent power spike himself at the moment, and they can maybe look to do stuff, but he's getting caught out. Yeah, he got caught out there by a nice glacial prison, but they're trying to turn it around onto Julius, but the rune prison being quite a bit, but here comes Junray with a double knockup, and they're just going to uh, <laughs> get right on out of there with that well morph. So a uh, big ultimate being used there, and this just means Penn State's going to go for the Rift Herald. Absolutely, you know, the kind of go back to the old last play where they burned two TPs, but Tempo's still there and he's low. Yeah, the flash four, not quite able to lock down Tempo, but here comes Summerite. Can he finally lock down Sayonara with a big absolute zero, able to kill Tipti there. That was a full uh, ultimate zero, I believe, there. And that is going to now even it up one for one as Julius is on the wrong side of things, forcing an ultimate from Gata, but Tempo finds the kill with that last rocket snipe. Everybody from Penn State's very low. Can they go back on this Rift Herald? It looks like they won it. There's not a lot of damage left on the side of Michigan as they're backing off. Gate it. You cannot take these hits from Shelly. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's going back. They just won because they had one more person there. Jen Jen did not have TP. Dog Brain did. Uh, we saw Dog Brain helping Sayonara out to get that massive absolute zero. Uh, getting Tipti out of that fight and eventually the 2v1 Tempo and Gated versus Julius. They were able to pick it up with Tempo grabbing his fifth kill of the game. They get Rift Herald. It's a 700 gold lead now for PSU, but they also have the Rift Herald in their pocket. And they can hopefully put that to good use. Uh, especially you look in mid lane. Yeah, so it is only one tower piece that wasn't almost a tier two going down bot side, which would have really opened the map up for Michigan. And I feel like that's something they really needed to do after they conceded the Rift Herald. But Jen Jen was just not quite enough uh, damage there to uh, completely destroying that. So it's going to be left on the map. And at this point, I feel like Michigan really needs to open up this map. They need to get some towers or they're going to slowly be uh, bled out in this game. Yeah, absolutely, you know, Ezreal, he's still, you know, he's pretty much, I guess, at his point, you know, he's got the, the Iceborne Gauntlet and the completed Muramana, he is pretty strong. Uh, you get a Last Whisper soon, or a Blade of the Rune King, and you're about as strong as you're going to get. And you want to use that power uh, soon, and just really, you know, let Gen Gen keep Dog Brain busy. This time they have the Teleport Mismatch again. Uh, most importantly, Dog Brain cannot TP to any fight, and if they want to keep it 4v4, uh, that will help out a lot. Uh, and you're right, they gotta make plays soon, I think, to really maximize Ezreal's strengths. Now, Dog Brain's gonna force this fight, but both ultimates are gonna be using. Dog Brain played smart, just back off, because his ultimate lasts longer than Alawis does. Just stun it up, just back off, playing it smart, especially after he got hit by that E. But here comes Generate again, going to lock down Tippy and Essence. At the same time, there's fights going on all across the map as Essence pushing forward with the Devour. Can the kills go through? Tippy finds at least one. He gets the second one with his help from his jungler, or support, sorry. As Julius comes up, picks up a kill, bot lane tower goes down, and Michigan just won roughly three fights across the map in their favor. Yeah, yeah there we go. The Ezreal strength coming in. I think it was just two fights, to be honest. But true, mid was pretty much a just nothing. Uh, Tifty actually kind of burning his flash too on the Generator's W. That was not really a, a threat to kill him. But now we got some action happening mid too, as that tower is going to go down a trade, and they still have the Rift Herald to keep going because no one has answered this mid yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so PSU could keep going here. Yeah, they're actually but back they're and actually off playing so. safe. I think they could have pressured that a little bit more, especially with. The Quirky, but uh, Teleport's coming bot side. They are wanting to go in onto this Alawi. The, old, the Valkyrie coming through, and now here comes Junray as well. I don't think that Teleport was much needed, but it doesn't matter. They're able to pick up that kill. So they went down, got a kill, and left the mid tower up. Now, it's kind of iffy if they would have got it or not, um, but they at least got yeah. the kill down bot side. I mean, Rift Herald alone took it down 
like two thirds. So I absolutely think they would have been able to pick that tower up, and I think that's much more impactful uh, and important than an Alawi kill at this point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're gonna keep trying to fight. Yeah, they're in now, very deep in the other side of the jungle, but they have five strong here. While they do see that Julius in the top side, now they know that Julius does have a teleport available, so they're going to play this relatively safe, but uh, Essence thought he was going to face check that, but with a nice tongue lash, he's going to be able to keep himself safe. But Penn State has the uh, inner lanes here to the mid lane. They look like they're just going to escort the minions to it and try uh, to right just now, uh, suffocate. They're really just trying to zone out in this jungle and establish priority over this dragon. Play to their strengths of the Nunu. Uh, secure as many drakes as possible. We can see control wards all over the map uh, around this dragon area. And this is what they want. Yeah, and this one's going to be an Infernal, so this means that there will be no Mountain Drakes this game. And uh, Penn State playing this one fairly cautiously, because they know that Michigan wants to be in on this. And they have to really give up a lot if they want to try to go for this Dragon, mostly in the health department. But it looks like Michigan, they're going back and forth if they want to go on this. They're taking most of the damage from this. Tifty down at half health. Rune Prison is, or I'm sorry, Glacial Prison is going to miss. But they're going to turn a nice engage by Jun right there. It's going to cost him his life, but he finds so much from it. Especially now that the Dragon did go over to Penn State. But can they win the fight afterwards? The ultimate from Gnar just uh, moving people. Not able to find any stuns, but it's going to be a two for one, three for one actually in favor of Michigan. And they're trying to find tempo at this point. Did the Dragon cost them too much? The stopwatch going to keep Tipti safe as they're going to easily get the kill there on a tempo. So a four for one, but an Infernal Drake going over to Penn State. Yeah, Alawi is such a tough, tough champion for everyone to dive on because you basically have to go through her to deal damage to that back line. So she just sat there Smack in gated and tempo, you know, healing up so much with that ultimate while everyone else tried to dive into the back line, but no damage was there. Uh, so Dog Brain was taken out pretty quickly. I don't think Dog Brain had Meganar at any point during that fight. No, he did use his ultimate. Um, oh, he did? Yeah, he, he used it okay. to push people back. He didn't find any stuns with it, though. I know they, they were initially stalling for that fight to get him uh, into Meganar. It may have come in pretty late. Uh, certainly was not an initiation, like he wasn't following up Jun Rei. Uh, in that initiation, now Sayonara are going to try to chase down Julius, but... They, again, they have no damage here to really chase that down. Yeah, that's the one thing about having a new new jungle. You, you just... You're, you have slows, you don't have any hard stuns, you uh, aren't really able to do damage either, so... You, you're here just to secure objectives, that's your main job. During fights, you want to buff your AD carry and just try to slow their squishies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the job for Anunu is pretty simple. One thing Michigan did, and I don't know if this was deliberate in this draft or it just turned out that way, but they don't have anyone who super relies on attack speed on their team. You know, the, the classic one is obviously the marksman pick, but Ezreal, you know, if he eats a snowball to the face, he can still spam Qs, and yeah, his DPS will go down a bit. But it won't be crushed to the same extent that a Kogma uh, would be, for instance. So again, I don't know if that was a deliberate choice or if that's just how it works out. But Sayonara, the second part of Nunu, you know, the first part is he presses W on his carries and walks away. And then the second part is he walks up to the enemy carry and presses E on them and cripples their damage. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is always going to be much less impactful this game. As well as, you know, I don't know, like, it's Zaya and it's Corky. They both use attack speed, but they're not as reliant on it as others. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if this is the ideal composition for Nunu in the end. Like He has three members of his team who, like you said, they kind of use yeah. the attack speed buff. Um, but he can only buff one at a time. You know, This yeah. isn't Arden Sensor Janna where she can ult and then all three of them get extra attack speed simultaneously. He still has to pick one. Uh, to buff up. I think there's some overlap where you can switch between two uh, at any given time with enough CDR. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it's not a Kogma. It's not a Vayne or something. Or a Tristan or someone who's just going to have these massive attack speeds. Uh, yeah. Of course, Zaya is better than someone like you said, Ezreal, who yeah. uh, wouldn't exactly. use it really yeah, at all. Yeah, the flip side is if, if Ezreal was on PSU, it would be awful. It would yeah. just be. Uh, but Corky relies a lot on, on his Trinity Force box and, and getting those long range hits in the rapid fire cannon. He doesn't like going as close uh, often. 
but yeah, so. I will see how, how they how they make it work, but the Valkyrie coming in from Tampa. That's a lot of damage on to uh, Julius as he's not able to use his ultimate and his zonias. He does actually doesn't have zonias, so he couldn't even use that to get away. And they're trying to find a trade on Dog Brain, but not able to find the lockdown. And this is looking like Baron now for Penn State. They pulled the trigger on this. How much damage is on it so far? They got it really low. It looks like this is gonna be an easy Baron for Penn State. Yeah, Dog Brain has Mega Nar too, so they have to respect that they cannot go near. Oh, can they stop the backs though? We do see a Lowy pushing down this bot, and they're gonna continue to try to find any kills at this point because some people back, but a nice ultimate coming out from Dog Brain. Do they have the damage actually in order to trade this? Dog Brain's very low. Tempo was there backing up, but he is going to drop, and Tempo is able to get out alive. A Lowy just short at uh, getting that tower. They sent three people back just to deal with Gen Gen, sacrificing Dog Brain in the process. Ultimately, they are able to get both the Baron and save the inhibitor tower, but there's now a 30 second pause as they are short a top laner. Uh, next dragon will be up in a minute, but I have to imagine they're gonna look to do some pushing. There is still the top lane outer tower uh, available. They could look to go top, get a couple towers in a row, potentially build up that wave uh, and push. But they're actually still not in a gold lead, so they have to be careful about how they approach things. Uh, yeah, because we're the initiation this... power of Silver's Might is still there. This is just showing the power of Fluptomancy. If you look at the Ezreal Zaya uh, difference right now, yes, he has a gold lead and a couple more kills, uh, but he has a massive amount of gold ahead of him. But uh, Sayonara looks like he's getting caught out there for the Absolute Zero doing quite a bit of work as Silver Might being taken very low in this fight. And while the Seeds able to get it, Julius is going to be the first kill. A nice ultimate into the Blade Collar by Gated. But it is still going to be a two-for-one trade in favor of Michigan. But there he is. He equals it out two for two now. As uh, Tifty is very low. Is he able to get out? Tempo not able to quite find the kill. Essence there just to try to uh, get them. Tifty trades his <laughs> life for Tempos. So everything, just a three-for-three three equal battle there. And uh, I don't know if anything else is going to come from that. Yeah, the oh man, we caught the Nunu. Let's beat him. Oh no. As he channels the absolute hero <laughs> in the middle of them. And then... You know, it creates that, that perfect kind of vacuum situation storm. where they can't go past and chase down Gated, who is actually doing damage from the side, putting out those feathers, uh, doing some work. And then Tempo was able to come in at the end of that fight, clean up a little bit. Tipty shifted back in, ultimately to trade kills there. But an even three for three, it does clear out some more Barons. Uh, I believe just one Baron will be left now on Gated. Uh, and that means that there's not a lot for PSU to do uh, with that buff, but they can get another clip. Yeah, what's fairly interesting is a lot of people sold their stopwatch. Um, almost everybody at this point has at least sold it, so we won't see a lot of GAs coming out. Um, the only two people that still have it, of course, is the Rise, who is going to build that in the Zonias. There's no doubt on that. But uh, yeah. Essence haven't used this yet, so he still has the opportunity of uh, using that stopwatch. And this might be just a surprise that, that Penn State might not be expecting at this point. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be too surprising, because you can oh. still press tab and see it. True. Uh, but and you should, by, you know, by multiple patches of stopwatches <laughs> existing have that habit down of who has a stopwatch, you know, who, who has that available. It, it's not a, a difficult skill to press tab and go, okay, he's still got it, but yeah, I mean, it could. Um, I gotta disconnect, I he's saw still there, too, actually, we're the going. Engage, the engage is gonna come through, there's probably a pause that we don't ha get to see here, as the Absolute Zero doing quite a bit of work, Penn State already picking up one kill, two kills, but it's two for two so far, as Tipsy has been left alone, no one, has even touched him at this point, as Gated is going to drop as well. Dog Brain being the last ally. That is an ace going in favor of Michigan, as Tipty was left completely alone, which is raining arcane shots throughout that entire fight. Yeah, and Julius as well. It was really Gen Gen and Silver's Might absorb so much of the focus right off of the bat. You know, again with Nunu, they just kind of zone the area in front of them, and then you just hit that. You can't really dive alongside a Nunu, like a Sejuani can get in there and CC someone up. Uh, Tipty and Julia just rolled through that fight after Silver's Might fell and were able to get everyone off of the table. Uh, Essence died, by the way, with Stopwatch still in his pocket. What a shame. Now the ultimate from Rai is gonna be used to get out of there. So I like the choice here, leaving the Tabot Tower still pretty hurt. 
but they just went down and got two towers and an inhibitor down the mid lane and this is going to be pretty devastating for Penn State. Uh, they just lost a big fight there and with nothing on the map it's not like they could try to force something right now while everybody's backing. They kind of just have to try to I guess just clear their jungle farm up and wait for another objective to come up. Yeah, or just find Tipty who keeps recalling yeah, in interesting places. But uh, luckily he has so many ways to get out of there. Nothing going to be used except just his time as he's going to be uh, forced back <laughs> Every at this point. Every time PSU catches someone from Michigan out, it's Junray and Sayonara. And then like, ha, we snowballed you and knocked you up. <laughs> and that's literally all we have. You can I, run away now. I, I always would like to see Sayonara on champions such as like Jarvan or uh, I would love to see him on Kha'Zix. Some people who are, if he, if he catches somebody out, they're dead. Yeah. Because if you see right here, it is at least a Gnar with him this time, but uh, still not going to be doing a lot of damage at this point, but they might yeah. be able to catch someone out. Now nope, they're just going to back but, off. Yeah, you're right. Like PSU in general, like that's, or, or Sayonara in general, they seem to have a pretty good sense of where people are going to be out mm -hmm. of position jump on them but when there's no one else with them uh, it doesn't really matter yeah you give them something like organic kha'zix you know then that person they find dead yeah 100 and that, that's a potential game winning play you imagine give them how many deaths there would be this game. and new new it's like tipty is slightly annoyed <laughs> by the inconvenience but he's still going back to base yeah, it's like you you just waste his time that's it like, yeah. that's all you can really do at that point. Maybe he's slow pretty mad, well but he's alive. Maybe their game plan is like, let's just try to tip, uh, like, just uh, tilt Tipsy out of existence. <laughs> and we'll just w just annoy him enough that he quits the game. Yeah, no I, I, I have Gen. created many strategies involved around making people rage quit. Usually on your team. Though. Not a super effective <laughs> play. Uh, here comes Sayonara. He's going to be the one that gets caught out, but he is extremely taking at this point. That's actually Tipti. Just gets blown up on the backside. He has no one to protect him. Essence wasn't there. And is the Ryze going to be able to use his ultimate to get out? He will be, but Gen Gen is going to be all by himself trying to get some tra damage trade there. And is going to put Sayonara fairly low, but that is a Nunu who's going to be able to heal back up fairly quickly. And with the Baron spawning, perfect timing here for Penn State as they're going to go for it. Yeah, that's all about target selection. Michigan's like, ha, we caught a Nunu. Alt him, jump on him. Tipped he was on the other side of the fight though, and gated Junray recognized that. Junray goes straight for Tipty, ignoring the rest of the fight and what was happening. They were able to remove him at the start, and then it was just scatter mode for Michigan. Most of them were able to get out. Uh, Gen Gen did have to pay with his life. But you know, the previous fights we've seen, Tipty, Julius, in the back, untouched. That time, Junray recognizes Tipti uh, was out of position, jumps on him immediately, and it's a win and a Baron for PSU. And now they can look to finally get some serious towers here. And this game is incredibly back and forth. It was looking very good for Michigan after they got that ace and the inhibitor down the mid lane. But now with Penn State, with this Baron buff, with this uh, Nunu buffed Zaya, we said Zaya is not the greatest of Siegers, but when you have the attack speed from a Nunu, it's going to make it 10 times yeah. easier. Yeah, I mean, ma mainly her issue is not so much uh, the attack speed that she has. It's She doesn't build rapid fire cannon. She's not like a Caitlyn or Trist who can hit it from a super long range. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when there's a threat around it. But yeah, you leave her alone with the tower. She will take it like any other AD, uh, really. But it, it's when it's in a seed situation where there's, you know, people like Asajwani uh, threatening the engage. You can't walk up too far. Uh, Tipty took a fair bit of damage there already. He's got uh, double life steal items. And, oh, he's got, a, he's got some fruit, too. So it uh, looks like he will be okay. Now, are they going to start to sell the Drake? They just going to look to clear up vision at the moment as PSU rotate down to the bot side, so Michigan rush the Drake. Here's the thing, though, that Penn State's close enough that they are able to get here before it's really even down to half health, so they're just taking a lot of poke from Tempo as well as the Elder Drake, so this is looking pretty good for Penn State as they are now equal as five here, and uh, that means Michigan not able to get the Drake as Penn State wants to continue this. They're... They're staying by here, but they have to back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because but their minions, minions are pouring. Yeah, pouring in 
And that's why Michigan are doing this. They realize that they can just stall them out. The Supermans are coming. They got Dog Brain to go back. He does have TP, but his Mega Nard just expired, so they're gonna go in. They find Tempo, but the QSS is gonna be popped immediately, and here comes all the damage from Penn State. Tempo is gonna be able to find the first kill of this match. Will the redemption be enough in order to trade this fight? Sayonara going to drop as well. And now Julius, all by himself, is going to probably drop. There it is. He's going to fall. That's going to be three kills on the side of Penn State. And that was a 5v4. Yeah, I just feel like their damage is dropping off at this point. Ezreal, you know, it's past his prime. He's already at just about six items. He's not going to get much stronger. Sayonara getting pretty tanky at that front and they keep having to deal with that new new absolute zero zoning them off and then gated tempo especially tempo right now doing so much damage able to get in there just annihilate anyone in front of them you know allow he never gets that tanky mm -hmm. and they could win this game here potentially yeah we have 20 seconds still on julius they're pushing down the mid side or the bot side here they have baron buff and the elder drake and this is they could have played around the teleport from uh dog brain a little bit better they forced them back to deal with the minions but actually as i say that tinty going to get jumped on but the devourer is coming in through from essence is the stopwatch going to come through doesn't need it he flashes out instead as penn state being forced back not able to fight this but yeah going back to that dragon fight i feel like they could have they forced dog brain back to deal with the base then they forced the teleport in from him if they would have yeah. just backed off and then did that dance again it could have went in their exactly. favor yeah there was one thing we do see that the mid inhibitor is now respawned so they may not have had the time to do that but at the very least you get that teleport and then you don't even if you don't immediately revisit that situation that's still a resource off the table and you can look for something else. Uh, and, you're, and you're just wasting the Baron at that point. You're not yep. giving up Elder Drake to anyone because you're not committing either way. Uh, so you're absolutely right. That probably would have been the safer play, but Sejuani cannot half initiate. She just goes. So, mm -hmm. well, actually that's not really true. She could throw out her ultimate, get the teleport, walk away. Which is but what happened. Silvers might want it to go in and then Sayonara will make it difficult to disengage when you're all standing in a massive slow field. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. They found the the ultimate onto Tempo, which is a prime target if he didn't have that QSS. Yes, exactly. The QSS has come out uh, gated as well as Mercurial Scimitar, which is kind of removing Silver's Might, Silver's Might options. Uh, you know, maybe you could go for Junrei, who, you know, he has the Righteous Glory, but he's still not super tanky since he's Rakan. Um, and that would, you know, remove any potential counter initiation if you can burst him out in that uh, CC chain. But yeah, you know, they're they're running low on options. Judge Ray just barely Went able to get out of that. Um, but yeah, the prism not gonna last. So this is gonna look pretty good now for Penn State as they know this is one prime engage tool from Michigan now off the table, and they're gonna try to get some uh, damage pressure here as even though. Um, Zaya might not build rapid fire cannon. Corky does, but Dog Brain gets caught out by that Alawi, and that means it's going to be quite a bit of damage and only half health. But okay, that's the real Dog Brain now, and he has to be pretty careful. Yeah, he's about to transform. They don't think a tower dive situation is coming in here, but they're waiting for those minions, the super minions, to come in on the bot lane. Where's um, they'll just Ray? stall out for now, escort minion waves in, get a little bit of poke damage. Michigan could look to fight here. Yeah, they're finding Dog Brain. I think they're just trying to push him out. And at this point, with a, with your inhibitor down, just stopping and engage is perfect. Because there's still a minute on Baron. Uh, there's still the, the Elder Drake is now off the table for a while now. So all they have to make sure is that they can contest this Baron and protect their bot side. They should be fine. Yeah, they were able to push PSU back. Uh, hold off any siege. I don't know how long it will be. Uh, I think their inhibitor is pretty freshly dead. Oh, you can't even tell anymore, can you? It's unfortunate. Um, yeah, Baron will be up in 30 seconds now, so there is a bit of a clock on Michigan. They really should take the opportunity to push that bottom wave out as much as they can. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't look like they'll be doing that. It, it may be even too late. They may just have to run there, establish whatever vision they can get. But PSU is already on the case, taking it out. Yeah, Silvermite's going to uh, find Sayonara, but... Uh... Not mu too much going to happen there. Nar does have teleport in 30 seconds, so they might be playing around that as they get closer to the fight because there's no teleports on either side except for Gen Gen. So he would be able to answer down to the bot side, but uh, Penn State is the one without the teleport, and they have Dog Brain down there. 
And this is going to leave the option for uh, Michigan because they don't have much longer until that teleports back up. And now I don't think they can force an engage, so they have to back off. And someone has to answer Dogbrain. They have to be really careful, though, because Gen Gen or Dogbrain could just end the game. Yeah, he's already on Nexus Towers, too, so... Gen Gen um, still has a recall. Yeah, They're going to lose a Nexus turret here. He's actually oh. forcing the teleport back, too, so... Uh, Gen Gen is now without here, so all Dogbrain has to do is he just has to teleport back. He's going to get this tower first, and all he has to do is back off and teleport for the rest of his team, and that should be a Baron there for Penn State. So Michigan with a little bit of hesitation, going to cost them there as they lose a Nexus Tower, and you then they lose not, okay. all They're gonna rush pressure it. here. I was going to say, you maybe wait for Meganar to come back before doing that, but they're just going to go right for it. And they're about to have this smite uh, consume combo going to be enough, and Michigan again, they don't want to go just in, and it's going to cost them. Julius is life, and now Silvermite's gonna be the next one to fall. Titi soon to follow. His essence is just running away, and he sold his stopwatch, so he doesn't even have it to delay at this point. So it looks like this is gonna be really good for Penn State as they pick up the Baron three kills, and Dogbrain already there to start pressuring this top side. This is easily going to be an inhibitor, and with the death timers at 40 seconds at this point, this is gonna be a 2v5 that I don't know if Michigan can defend. Julius doesn't even have Zanyas. That is so weird for a rise. You think he stepped so far forward he was caught out, but he would have had to get a jail free card if he just had the standard rise item. And now it looks like PSU is gonna push all the way in and take this series. Penn State wins it 2v1 with a couple of nice team fights in two very close back and forth games. After the first one, I think Michigan really had a big advantage over Penn State, but Penn State rallied in the last two games and were able to uh, really win these and they were very close yeah when penn state the two games they won it really looked at times like it was just michigan again the top lane the bot lane always had leads uh, in favor of michigan uh even mid lane i think that time was a bit julius favorite of course that's partly just rise spiking mm -hmm. a bit earlier than uh corky but yeah by the time they got to the late game it was just they couldn't kill anyone anymore and tempo Again, this is one of the times where I really wish we could see the damage charts, but I no doubt Corky would have done a lot of damage. Oh, that yeah. is, he would have done most damage in the game, probably. That's just what Corky does. We saw, you know, it was um, Silver's Might, Gen Gen. They started melting towards the end of the game. They would dive in and then disappear. And then, yeah, I'm just, I don't understand the lack of Zonius, though. I don't. Yeah, um... Some it's the item standard choices. rise item. Yeah, some item choices for Michigan is definitely uh, uh, questionable. Like you said, the Zonias. Uh, in game two, Gen Gen's item build, he he built for the split pushing yeah. NAR for when you're ahead and you just want to keep applying pressure. But in an even game, uh, you're not going to be able to commit to the team fight like you would if you just went take NAR. And it really if hurt. If he did though. that, it would have been okay, but then he would just try to all in dog brain straight up from yeah. like 100 percent hp which which is not what nar can ever really do it's against mega nar yeah so yeah mm -hmm. um interesting question or interesting choices in, in that game some questions certainly uh but ultimately i like it two games in a row psu just kind of left the panic aside i think that was really what happened that first game you know they got behind in the bot lane. And they, yeah, you're right. They and they just set. threw everything at it. It's like, put this fire out. And in the end, they just spread the fire to all of the lanes. This time, they gave up first blood and second blood. Yeah. Three minutes into the game in a straight 2v2 bot. And they did not completely collapse as a team. Which I think shows you know a bit of a growth even just in that series. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely something uh, to commend. Yeah, and this just this series right now showed a lot of what the BTN series is going to have to offer. This was incredibly close, incredibly exciting game. So I can't wait to see in the future of what these teams are going to be able to do as uh, this is only week two. There's still quite a bit of weeks to go. Um, I, sadly, I don't know where to look up all the stuff about BTN because if you do... I don't think there is anywhere. Because you I go up to Riot their page... has deleted it. Well, they had last existence. year's stuff still. Yeah, exactly. Like, Riot has just wiped BTN 2018 from the internet.
We'll have to find you know, it. They never put it up. If anybody from Penn State or Michigan maybe, knows maybe where we could find it, just send us a link. That's something that's going to help us out a lot. But uh, but yeah, that's going to be that's going to be it from us for this first game or for this series. Um, we really enjoyed it. We love casting these things. It's, yes, it's a blast. Um, but yeah, I we gotta say Penn State. You're right. They played it well. They panicked the first game. That's probably the the perfect word to use. They panicked yeah. through everything at the Cogma and just kept feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. The second game, they they played it very patiently. They played it well, um, and yeah, I think just for Michigan, just uh, one or two decisions near the late game uh, cost them there. The uh, mostly the dragon play, I'd say this time they could have played that a little bit yeah. better, but uh, yeah, no, definitely. in all in all, this is showing a lot of great stuff from the BTN series, and I'm really excited to see how it goes. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. <laughs> all right. I, I want to keep doing this. Keep keep bringing me in. All right, hey, we'll probably be back next week. Penn State, Michigan, yes. if you guys want us to cast, just let me know when you guys are playing or send me the VODs. Either works for us. And uh, we'll see you guys soon, hopefully next week. And uh, thanks for watching. See you guys later.